Welcome, everybody, back to laying out. Hang on, let me get closer. Let me get closer. Let me get in your face. Let me get in your face. Let me get in your face. Ah back to Distant Quest gameplay. My name is Brodimus. Uh, today, the newest Distant Quest came out. It's been a hot minute since Distant Quest came out. Um, so today is going to be Red Glare, and I don't know what they call him in this. Is it GHB? Oh, hello. Give it a second. There we go. Hi. Ah, yeah, we're fine. Uh, yeah, it's just the high blood. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. We had Volume 9, the Neophyte. She is rad, remember? And Volume 10, the High Blood. We live in a clown society. Yeah. That's... That's definitely... <clears throat> <laughs> so, we're gonna start with Volume 9, of course. Boy, howdy, it's been so long since we did uh, uh, Best Pirate Girl. Kinda. She's a bit of a slaver. Um... You know, and we had Best Boy, though. We had Summoner. Boy, that was a long time ago. <clears throat> Ever since Hive's so back, too. I haven't given up. I mean, yeah, same. <laughs> I mean, I did this, but that's about it. Um, but yeah, so as usual, I'm going to be not looking at chat for those of you in chat. If you're on watching on YouTube, check out my Twitch channel. Twitch.tv slash Brodimus. We love following and subscribing to Twitch.tv slash Brodimus. Anyway, <laughs> Volume 9, The Neophyte. <clears throat> Content warning, violence, death, religion, mentions of mutilation, blood, troll cannibalism, policing, sexual mentions, and trauma. That's, that just runs the gamut of trigger warnings. Holy shit. <coughs> Hi, baby. Hi. What's up? What are you doing? You bumping my, my, my light. Get out of here. Go. Get. Shoo. Shoo. Go. Get. Get out of here. Get. 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 You don't need to tuck yourself under my desk. No, you don't. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna actually... Turn the music up a bit now. Cool. <clears throat> Darkness, as usual. Ooh, I'm excited. I'm excited. Some days the void feels crushing and endless. Others, slightly less crushing, never less endless. You have been past due getting out of here for some time now, or at least so you thought. You can never really tell in the limitless plane. Minutes blur into hours here. It makes sense that it's taking longer than usual. Aradia must be busy watching everything fall apart. She said the better term is cracking, as nothing has actually come apart fully yet, but still, the idea of things cracking in a way uh, even she didn't understand. <clears throat> Something about it just doesn't sit right with you. <clears throat> hey, sorry, uh, time just seemed to get away from me. Of course, we're right off, right off the bat with the time puns. So there she is. It was about time she showed up. <laughs> yeah, now you've got the spirit. I think you'll like the next one. She is a tough cookie, but a real card. Well, that's a, re a relief. Excuse me. Pool. <laughs> <coughs> Aside from your break with Summoner, things have been kind of bleak lately in your endeavors. Sort of flavorless and filled with pity rather than any expressed interest in friendship. Don't worry, you two will uh, be as thick as thieves in no time. That is just an expression. Uh, don't steal in front of her. <laughs> What did they say in Oblivion? <laughs> oh, God. I don't even remember. I, the, I, I, stop. You're breaking the law. Or something like that. I don't remember. Now go out there. Knock him dead. With that, a portal opens beneath you, right on cue, and sends you tumbling through it. I feel like I do a lot of tumbling in this game. Ooh. This is frightening, actually. It's, like, remarkably frightening. I like the horns on the right guy over here. Hang on. My face is in the way. I like the horns on, on that duder over there. <clears throat> And there's also a Sasquatch to the left here. Holy shit. <clears throat> I really like this, this screen, though. The tree, like, growing into the sidewalk with the weird glowing orb thing. That thing's rad. I love that. Instantly, your senses are enraptured by the smell of food and distant sea air. Adult trolls mingle around you, but you manage to make it through without getting in anyone's direct path. And it's far too busy for anyone to question the appearance of another face. <clears throat> you notice the ground's cobbled texture as it stabilizes underfoot, and you look up to see various stalls with large trolls weaving about. A few yellow eyes flicker toward you with curiosity, but with the crowd being of warmer hues, they manage to lower their gazes. As you can scan whoops, I can't read. As you scan the beautiful <laughs> whoops. As you scan the beautiful market, the sheer number of trolls dawns on you with a sinking feeling of oh shit. As much as you'd like to stay and look around, you gather it's only a matter of time before the wrong troll gets a good look at you. <clears throat> Where the fuck did Radio just drop you? This is dangerous! <laughs> In Terrabang? <laughs> <coughs> you glance back to where you came from before quickly scanning the area around you. There has to be somewhere you can sneak off to and regroup, right? 
This is getting ridiculous. This is just straight up redonks. It looks like there is a little alley over between two stalls full of fruit that looks, uh, that looks more like it could eat you hmm? than you could eat it. That could work. Anywhere you could take a breath. That or you could zap out of here and... Uh, <clears throat> move it! Oh! Oh! Okay. All right. Just going, going absolutely fucking nuts on whatever instrument that is. Holy cow. <laughs> a voice cuts you off before somebody pushes you down. A large indigo troll rushes past you in a flurry, and suddenly you and, the, and your poor rear have been thrown artfully across all of this cobblestone. And damn, that's a lot of cobblestone. This really isn't a place where you want to be all up and all, all up on the floor either. That's for sure. You get your shit together as fast as you can. You manage to scramble up to your feet and dust off your tukas because you still need to get out of here. <clears throat> God, the music. Mm. It's just fucking nuts. Uh, okay, so what kind of voice does Red Glare have? She's kind of so like Latula was kind of like Skater Valley Girl kind of a thing, wasn't she? Oh, thank you for the hydrate, Kohai. Um, <clears throat> God, boy, it's been so long since I voiced Latula. Holy shit. So it's like, uh, <clears throat> yeah, let me get a bit closer here while I figure this out. It's, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to just straight up do, uh, uh, uh Terezi, because that's just more, that's what that is. <clears throat> but she's, like, a bit more, like, radical, you know? I guess we'll do something like that, but she's got to be deeper because she's an adult now. <clears throat> Excuse me! You are once again thrown on your rear. However, this time, the significantly smaller uh, troll at least has the kindness to... Oh! Your eyes start a start at polished cherry red go-go boots. Okay, got it. Hang on. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm piecing it together. Your eyes start at polished cherry red go-go boots and eventually travel up over an expanse of what you can guess is spandex and some really tasteful liberties with the curve of her waist and a sewing machine. <clears throat> the retellings of such a devilishly tasteful outfit bring your mind back to a room that kind of smells like the inside of an eight ball and teen angst. I get it before you're crushed, kid! A Terezi with glittering fangs and soft hair pulls you up from the ground, and you realize that Tizi's, uh, what Tizi's meant when she said she had something to live up to. She steadies you before giving you a curt nod, her cane gripped in her hand as she bolts after the indigo who had torn through the crowd before her. Hey, Tangled Up, how are you now? Oh shit, is she that little thing? No way. This is Terezi's ancestor? Red Glare? The Red Glare? Dragon riding, crime fighting, best thing to ever grace the alternative law system, Red Glare? Okay, maybe not all that. That's a that's a bit of all that, actually. After your glorious encounter with the Mind Fang, it would only make sense to also come face to face with what Riska and Terezi had retold as the rivalry rivalry of the era, or something made up of campy like that. You book it faster than your feet can catch uh catch up with with, with your brain. Hang on. <laughs> uh, piecing it together. You book it faster than your feet can catch up with your brain. If it isn't to make sure that the indigo doesn't leave Mrs. Pyrop splattered across the ground, then you want to at least learn more about her or catch her name. In this moment, you smell something fierce. The haunting aroma of friendship. Or maybe that was, that was just her perfume? I mean, probably. Friendship perfume. Perfume. When you skitter into the alleyway, it's a good word. Good word, skitter. <clears throat> that you saw the pair make a mad dash and do like bats out of hell, you find the teal woman beginning to scamper up a fire escape in hot pursuit. She is almost on him when, just as she manages to get halfway up, the indigo huffs it over the last rung. When he rises, he gazes out over the ladder, jumping back in surprise when she grabs at his pant leg. Oh, oh fuck. <clears throat> oh, fuck, lady. Yanking his leg back, she fucking just talks him onto the, <laughs> onto the ground below, plummeting eight stories. <clears throat> is the music too loud? Let me know. Uh, he delivers a sturdy kick to the ladder. His strength alone dislodges it from its welding. Clang. You motherfu- Her eyes widen as the whole fucking kit and caboodle comes careening down with a groan and her attached to it. She manages to jump ship before uh, before it all crashes down, and you're happy but also kind of amazed uh, she sticks that- uh, when she sticks that landing like it was nothing. She crushed it! For a second, you almost cheer, but that wouldn't be very cash money. <laughs> that wouldn't be very cash money of you. The 
ladder comes clattering down at her side, the echoing of ringing metal reverberating in your ears. It lands directly in a large puddle, which splashes you with whatever is all over the fucking ground. Despite the muck, you manage to catch her shouting towards the fleeing blue blip with her cane raised to the heavens. <laughs> is, that, is that a JoJo pose? Is that really... <laughs> is that really... <laughs> Oh no. <clears throat> I know your face and don't you forget it, scoundrel. Waste of flesh and bone. I may not have you today or even tomorrow, but I will have you. Mark my words, there's no rest for the likes of you. Oh man. Frickin' barf bag. The teal's chest heaves with labored breaths as her eyes flicker about the fire escape from behind her cherry shades, searching for a route to pursue him or anything that could give her a leg up in the chase or any hope of ever catching him. Red Glare's Bizarre Adventure. Like, that was straight up just the, the Jotaro Kujo point. Her shoulders seem to sink as she realizes it's much too late for her to attempt any sort of pursuit now, and instead turns to meet your curious gaze. Can I help you? You're stuck blinking and suddenly so aware of yourself, self-consciously pulling at your now damp clothing as she looks directly at or into you. Maybe you would have the energy to complain about it if not for all the pain shooting up your tailbone? That really isn't going to ache in the morning. None of that really matters now, though. You have been through worse. Totally! So much worse than this. <laughs> yeah, sure. <clears throat> what you're really itching for is her name! Because it would be weird if you already knew that, right? Right. <laughs> is it weird to know someone's name before they tell you it? Maybe a little bit. Red Glare. Neophyte is supposed to be attached to it, but I don't think we should normalize inadequacy. Speaking of inadequacy, you really should be more aware of your surroundings. You're going to get yourself killed. For a second, you think she is actually going to scold you until her smile pulls into the most contagious display of ivory daggers you've ever seen. Oh, no, wait, excuse me, excuse me. It has more, it has more spice than that. You've ever done seen. <laughs> you almost... <laughs> yeah, yeah, the most beautiful bear pearl wax you ever done seen this side of the, uh, the bio. <laughs> <clears throat> you almost can't help but smile back. After all, she's been so nice as to help... Uh, to, uh, as to at least help you up, you don't think anyone has had the courtesy to do that yet? Well, you were a casualty. I'm supposed to serve and protect, and I leave your skinny butt spinning in the dirt like a top. You didn't look. Pr uh, you did look pretty dumb when you fell, though. Her nose crinkles as she laughs at your foolishness, and you almost forget you're kind of being made fun of for a second. <laughs> yeah. Oh. She doesn't really make you feel like she's picking on you. Maybe this is how she makes friends. That's a good sign, right? Maybe. Yeah, sure. You know, just convince yourself that, buddy. At least I waited to laugh until after I made sure you were okay. I usually don't. Whew, okay, cool. That's just how she makes friends. If you could get through, uh, if you could get through Teresa, you can totally manage this Red Glare character. So far, she isn't totally insane, right? Well, well, let's see how this pans out, right? Knowing how these uh, friend ventures go, she probably is, but she's cool enough to make you really want to find out for yourself. Not only are you left wondering what kind of fun little secrets this pear-shaped uh, troll, a troll holds. Oh, that was hard to say. Troll holds. <clears throat> but you are, oh, but you also are beginning to wonder where you are in the first place. The smell of sea air not too far off. It takes your mind back to the violets you've met in the, in the past. You have met a few decent ones, but you can't say they have been your favorite so far. Just a run in the middle of trade, harbor pirates and their grimy folk usually don't uh, come more than a few blocks inland, so you don't have to worry about smelling them here. I really like this sprite. This is a really cute sprite. Speaking of folk. She steps toward you, and you are momentarily overwhelmed. It's really hard to think about how, just seconds ago, you were saying how small she was compared to the indigo. You hadn't even thought to remind yourself how tall she is compared to you. You think, if she didn't poke so much fun at you, you'd even call her comforting. You don't look like any kind of folk I've ever seen. How many people saw you? What is that? <laughs> what is that emoji? Are that supposed to be her glasses? And her horns? Oh boy. <laughs> that one really threw me off. <laughs> Honestly, you weren't paying attention. You were actually just trying to leave? Doesn't matter how many people saw you? It matters because I may have to surrender you to my department head, so yes. A sudden realization hits you like a brick shithouse. I don't... I'm not sure if that phrase works here. But sure. You just delivered yourself like a finely packaged box of buttery bun pastries into the hands of a real-ass cop. Uh, yeah. This is a cop. Not just any cop. The cop. Oh, excuse me. Troll. A troll cop. The. There it is. The troll cop. You know, the Alternian kind. The people who uh, you have managed to avoid this whole time. Oh, God. 
what do you say? What can you even do now? Hi, hello, I'm an alien from another planet. Honestly, it has a really good talking, good thing going for you until, er, for, until now. However, honestly, it has worked best for people who didn't work in, the, in civil services. If she is as crazy as Terezi, she is going to have you dragged out of this alleyway by a noose while singing songs the whole time. She finally got a mutant alien thing and everyone will praise her name! Yay! Wonderful! Great news for me! The idea shakes you to your core so hard you almost forget she asked you a question at all. Did she ask you a question? Dude, I don't know. I don't know. What did she say again? Why are you sweating so much? You were just kidding before about the whole does it matter thing. Of course it matters. Your mom always said you had a good sense of humor. No one. Not even my mother has said I have a good sense of humor. <laughs> Dude, take a chill pill. I'm just asking how many people you think uh, you think saw you. Clearly you aren't a troll. I mean, anyone with even a half run of think tank can see that. With how skittish you are, it seems that you have actually spent a fair amount of time on Alternia. Her gloved hands settle on her hips as she stares you down, tapping a finger against the ivory, ivory of her dragon cape. She studies you expectantly. I get these are glasses, but this is the 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 glasses are really, really unsettling to me for some reason. You seem tense. What? Are you a little nervous because you're clearly not supposed to be here? I don't think I didn't notice. Uh, I don't. I don't think I didn't notice you beforehand. I had to weigh my priorities, and it would have been a shame not to have gotten a good look at your face. Maybe you aren't an alien, though. Maybe you are something else, like a mutant or even cahoots with one, some kind of unnatural thing. Why did you even come up here? What makes you think I'd cover something like that up? Not only do her words shock you, but they leave you with an unshakable sense of dread. Yeah, yeah. First off, you are all natural. I'm gonna leave that one alone. Second, your newfound friend in progress is bigoted, just as just when you thought she was so rad. How can you handle this information? The red glare interwoven into the history of so many of your pals' hopes and dreams isn't the beacon of justice and equality she was supposed to be. You are really on a losing streak of quality friends here. Yeah, yeah. Comply with the man. Set things straight. Oh. Uh, let's see. comply with the man. What's the what's the prog? What's the what, how does that how does that unravel? Let me get closer here. If we comply with the man, she takes us into custody. We're either executed or studied because we're an alien. Or we set things straight. That sounds like the same thing. That sound or it's gonna turn into a lie. Music just goes absolutely fucking nuts, doesn't it? Let's uh, let's go, let's go. Comply with the man sounds like a good way to get dead. Let's go with that. Comply with the man. <coughs> Doesn't fit the tone. Like it's kind of true, CG. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Hiss. <coughs> uh, hang on, I need to write down when I make these things, because otherwise I'm never gonna be able to come back and add these in in any sort of uh, uh, efficient manner. Your shoulders sink, but the past is the past. During your journey, you've seen things you wish you could change. Aradia already told you everything was cracking, and while you are free to continue as you as, as you have been, there's no point in hastening the split uh, haste, hastening the splinters when you don't have to. You realize now that things are meant to stay as they are. Maybe Red Glare is one of them? No, you aren't a mutant or anything like that. Being in any sort of allegiance with them is illegal. For a good reason, too. Being a mutant isn't something that should be preserved. What, is, what was it that she said? You shouldn't normalize inadequacy? Everyone slipping between your clenched teeth feels wrong. Hopefully, you can butter her up and get her on good on her good side, so you at least end up out of this alive. Then maybe you could live uh, with the way you just shat all over their names. What? Then maybe you could live with the way you just shat. Oh, got it. Yep, got it. Got it. <laughs> all the people with the the uh, the the the, <coughs> the sufferer and shit. You know the flutter of momentary confusion that passed over her features in the span of a breath. If you hadn't been looking for her so if you've been looking for so much more in her, you might have even missed it. Red Glare's expression steals with a clench of her jaw before she gives you a quick nod. The air is shifted into one of clear discomfort, and something tells you this may have been a test. You aren't the best at reading a room, even in the worst of times. Yep, that's yep, that tracks. That actually, that actually checks out. Fantastic! I'm really glad we got that out of the way. But something tells me an alien on on home soil would really be something to bring back to the dis district office or the big guy himself. After all, I can't just let you walk free. You've committed a crime. You throw up Bob's with a fearful gulp, and you're almost too scared to ask what that crime may be. <laughs> Existing. There it is. Yep. Die. Fuck. Yep. 
Hugo rigid as a smooth, calm smile slowly spreads over her razor teeth, and suddenly you really start to wonder if she could have taken that troll from, from before alone. Something in your head screams for you to run, but for once, it's your legs that aren't willing to catch up. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. That's a really cool sprite. Her cane twirls through her fingers with, like a, uh, with a pinwheel of art, artful acrobatics, passing over and around her back before she stops mid-twirl. Her eyes are resting right on your feet in the most intense way, itching your eyes to flick her down. Um, your shoes are untied. What? Oh, okay, that was nice of her. Of course, you glance down at your... <laughs> Made you look! With one fluid motion, the cool body of the cane thwacks against the back of your legs with enough force to actually send you off your feet. After all this time, it finally happened. You let yourself get got by a cop of all people. That was a really good sprite. I really like the laughing sprite. Oh, the art is so... Her sprites are so good. I love them. This, this sprite. God, I love it. You catch one final look at your once potential friend, who's wearing a grin twice the size of her face and still laughing like a loose hyena. Oh yeah, that's probably where Teresa got it from. Dang, how'd you mess up this bad? Before you can even answer for yourself, Cobblestone rears its ugly head, rushing right towards your face. Hey, Send him to the chokey! The chokey! The chokey! Wow, a Matilda reference! This is really cool, I really like that. I really like that art, actually. A Matilda reference in my distant quest? It's more likely than you think. <laughs> hey, we got the we got the bad ending. Fuck. What was that? Twenty one minutes. <coughs> Look at that. Look at that. Now we just need to get the long bad ending. Then we get the good ending, and we're golden. And then we can move on to the high blood. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. That's a lot of talking, holy shit. All right, so, set things straight at 21.45. Why is this so bad if you thought... <coughs> this was fan-made, yep, 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 yep. Why is it so bad if you thought she would recover from, uh, for mutant, or a mutant? Doesn't everyone deserve a chance? You can't help directly in the ways you wish you could, but you, but you want to do what's possible when the opportunity arises. A mutant lived and loved just as she does, regardless of where anyone's hue lays on the hemo spectrum. Existence should never be a crime. Genuine right and wrong are where laws should help uh, should come into play, not things that no one could ever help. If wanting a low blood or mutant to have every fighting chance that she does is wrong, then you don't want to be right. An odd softness passes over the teal's impish features as she clutches- Impish is actually a good description for uh, the, the Terezi line. <clears throat> Impish features as she clutches her cane to her chest. A beat passes before she releases a peal of laughter, brushing her bangs out of her face and shaking her head with disbelief. <sighs> You're dangerous, kid. She removes one of her candy, candy red gloves, passing her cane into her free hand and extending the other to you. As you take it, you know the roughness of calluses developed from fighting with her cane. Come on, we really shouldn't stay here for too long. I think if you and I really want to talk this up, we should go somewhere else. This is a really cute sprite also. Fuck, why is she so cute? A giddy feeling, uh, oh, excuse me, <clears throat> a giddy feeling rises in your chest, and you can't help but the f uh, can't help, uh, can't, and you can't read, and you can't help the feeling of accomplishment that fills your very being. Things are going so well, you can practically taste a, a budding friendship on the horizon, and boy is it sweet. She keeps you close to her side as she leads you through the bustling city, no corner or alleyway is left unchecked as you pass, her knowing eyes scanning every turn before uh, before even letting it come into your sight. It isn't until she pulls you around when uh, uh, around behind her when you pass a group of trolls that you realize she's protecting you. Oh. <coughs> the way she ducks in and out of the busier areas reminds you much of the way of the much of the way the Dolorosa scurried around as she uh, led you to the safe house. Red Glare knows how to transport someone through through town and keep them safe while doing it. You can't help but wonder if she's done this before. The larger, more stable structures begin to thin, and the smell of the sea grows more distant as Red Glare leads you along. You both pass through what seems to be the subgrubs of a rust blood neighborhood, and she suddenly takes you off the road, back behind the buildings. The good alliteration, back behind the buildings. <clears throat> a serene forest stretches out ahead of you. While most of your encounters with Alternian plant life have been threatening and kind of gross, this one seems rather hospitable. The majority of trees are covered in needles, reminding you of the coastal pine forests of your home planet. The trunks have grown thickened and sturdy with time, and reach high before the lower cover uh, covering of canopy even begins. 
<clears throat> Allie, how are you now? Also recursive, how are you now? <clears throat> <coughs> you follow her lead for a while, gazing up at the trees. A summer breeze filters through their branches, sending them on a gentle on a gentle dance. The ground beneath you crunches with leaves and sticks beneath every step you take. Every breath you make. Except it's not, those aren't the lyrics. And you can't help but think this may be the first time you have felt this safe in the woods on this planet. A few minutes in, she finally turns to you. I think we are safe to sp speak freely here. Usually there aren't any squatters this far into the woods. Well, you said back in town. Did you mean all that? About mutants? Of course you meant all that. During your time in Alternia, you have seen atrocities that would never slide back home. Things were perfect, but they certainly weren't this bad. Each and every troll you've met had hopes and dreams, each equally as important as the next. They are your friends, and even if you can't ever hope to have them understand each other, you try every day to understand them. Hmm. That's... You really must be either clueless or lost in your own blissful ignorance. Look around you. Thinking like that is suicide. I've known too many people fall in... I've known too many people fall into the clutches of hope. Fully aware, expectant even, of what is to come. Even still... Uh, peddling on what you think would be a fool's journey. Yeah, you kind of know what she means. With how she speaks and the eventual ties between all your new friends, you can only wonder if she means the signless too. She cuts you off with a clearing of her throat, pushing up her glaring shades and gesticulating towards you with uh, forward curiosity. Just remember what I'm saying, okay? How long have you been on Alternia anyway? Is there even a linear way to explain how long you've been on Alternia? Nope. <laughs> nope. Time's all just kind of fucked right now. You have jumped around through so many eras and met so many people, it feels impossible to put a real timeline on it all. You aren't even sure what day you crash-landed on Alternia to begin with. Maybe the 13th of something or another? Mm, nah, that doesn't sound right. Probably the 12th or something. <laughs> all you really know is you have been uh, or all you really know is you've been slumming it around here long enough to know a thing or two about Alternia. Eras? I guess I shouldn't ask an alien to convert time for me. So, you have seen what goes on here, the atrocities that my own people put each other through daily, how our world is infected with hate and corruption. You've definitely seen your fair share of questionable interactions. It's astounding how willing people have been submitting to their own suffering, to willingly play into a system of oppression and normalize suffering on a mass scale. Sometimes, the people on this hurtling space rock make your head spin, but you want to see them through. You want it to be worth it. Yes, you've seen them, been victim to them a few times too, but you don't understand? Doesn't she... As stellar as my uniform is, look past it for just a second. I have something important to ask you. Her hand sifts towards the, towards the collar of her vest. I can't read. Dipping around her neck and fiddling with something before meeting your eyes earnestly. Consideration stills her as she looks over your clothing. Where did you get those robes? Your robe? It seemed red glare, red glare went to the wrong school of law. What is she, the fashion police? <laughs> Looking down, you realize a dead man's clothes aren't very fashion forward of you. Where did you get them? The signless? Why does she ask? You feel a flicker of worry rise in your chest. She's been cool so far, but you still need to keep your guard up. Don't forget that she was she has you vulnerable in the middle of the woods. For all you know, she's been spending her free time hunting down anyone that conspired with the traitors and putting an end to the signless's name. That was a lot of S's. Signless's. <laughs> you see the beginnings of a grin filling her cheeks to the brim with razor-sharp teeth. Instantly, you regret your words and brace for the worst. If Terezi has taught you anything, that smile means trouble. Oh, really? She's just the old really owl. I'm old. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, oh. She stops you fully now, settling a calloused hand over your shoulder and dropping down beside you. Instantly, you flinch away, surprised to see that, rather than a knife or some other instrument of misery betwixt her fingers, there is an interlocked pendant resembling 69. Nice. The sliver, <laughs> the silver chain holding it to her is still strung around her neck and dangling from her grasp. Do you know what this is? Your focus goes bleary before crystallizing on the peculiar shape. Serenity en uh, envelops you as you recognize what would be... Carcat symbol? Right? Yeah, you're absolutely sure that was a symbol Carcat wore in a sweater. <clears throat> the music is really good. I really dig this. <clears throat> Looking up into her expectant face, you can only imagine what, a, what reason a random-ass teal would have to be wearing Carcat's symbol around her... What the fuck? You can only imagine what reason a random-ass teal would have to be wearing Carcat symbol around her neck. It's for him, duh. Duh. <laughs> Sweet. 
You know, if that is the case, come on then. We can go to my my hive. We have so much to talk about. I haven't seen anyone else in so long. You start to feel like you are the only one after a while, especially when you have to stick around and watch the, uh, the after effects from the inside. I mean, even that big, beautiful, uncomfortable idiot. <clears throat> uh, exit. Ooh, exit. Exit. Uh, exit darkly got all messed up over it. You watch her hurriedly slap on her gloves, pulling the gleaming fabric tight over her hands. With a wide sweep, she then unclips her ivory cane from the harness at her side, rolling it once through her fingers before propping it against her shoulder. <coughs> so, she knows Darklear too? Oh great, good, <laughs> good. We gotta, God, we, anything to do with the big, big, big ditty uh, himbo. She laughs uncomfortably with a wave of her cane. Hand! I can read, beckoning for you to walk alongside her again. I don't know about all that. You know Darklear though? Wow, that's really interesting. I just find it so odd that you know him and uh, him and you are an alien. Not to mention you know so much about the signless. Usually our connections work pretty close to the Empire. That's uh Is that a three in place of an A? Go with it. That's how I know him, obviously. I would see him at trials as soon as well I was reporting into my A breath huffs out through her nose. This is a really good sprite. All of her sprites are amazing. They're so good! rolling her eyes with a clear distaste. Whoever this guy is, he clearly has given her some sort of grief before. This is your chance to friend it up with her. Get in there and lay down some deep bro time. My boss. Her boss? Lame. <laughs> <coughs> well, I mean, technically it is, with my, it is within my duty to do as he requests, even if he is gross and overall unpleasant to be around. So yes, my boss. Who? Why, the Grand High Blood, of course. I unfortunately see to Mr. Makara quite often. I've been told it is something to be proud of. I digress. A Norbo with a lot to say is all he is. A Norbo? I was there when Darkly's title was stripped. Poor dude. It was like seeing this his whole life stripped away, and, and it was, uh, and it was, it kind of was. To think I deserve the same. Let's just keep going. I always feel more comfortable talking about this kind of thing at my hive. It's the one place I know I'm free to do so since I do it often. You watch as she starts off without you now, walking with her head high and a swing in her step that you hadn't seen before. It must be hard to be her. While you have yet to crack the friendship code that would tell you everything you need to know with her, you can't help but wonder what it all must be like. Clearly, she knew the silence and his little family, there's no doubt about that. It's hard to imagine her waking up every night and moving on while being completely surrounded by the people that killed them, and the people that enforce everything they spoke against. Yeesh, yikes, yikers. You follow after her, once again safe at her side, even deep within the forest. Sure of yourself on your uh, on your one-way ticket to Friendship Town, you readily match her pace until a large structure comes into view, nestled into the clearing and coupled with another building. Coupled with another building. Oh, excuse me. The main structure was, while impressive and scholarly in design, not nearly as large as some of the more expansive hives you've seen so far. It is secluded but homely, with a large perimeter of concrete which stretches into the back and cuts into a pathway leading to a large open barn with a, with a hay-lined floor. The inside is untouched by the moon's twin glow, casting from above. The heels of bright go-go boots click, uh, uh, click against the concrete circling her home as she leads you to the large door, eventually letting you in with an appraising glance. Sealing off the light of the moon, the door shuts behind you with a click, engulfing the surprisingly warm room with a thick coating of darkness. Shuffling fabric can be heard rounding from behind you to the right, and an, and an anticipatory silence stretches between you both. Is she going to turn on the light? Nope, this is your life now, dude. Trolls definitely have the perk of being able to see in the dark. Try as you might to live up to their impossible standards, the universe and whatever gods there are in it have not blessed you with such abilities yet. Despite your ability to jump through time. Sigh. <laughs> hey, um... Ah! Ah! Your stomach drops as the void originally supporting your weight drops from under you, sending your arms and legs flailing. Anxiety spikes liquid nitrogen into your veins as you quickly realize that your weight is being held up by your hood. Someone is carrying you. Red glare? <laughs> Oop. What is happening? What is going on? You are unceremoniously tossed onto some sort of plush chair, your tailbone smacking at a beam running through the bottom of it. Why is it, why is it my ass? What is your problem with my ass? That's fine, you didn't need that anyway. <laughs> Hands running along the sides of your surroundings, it can be concluded that this is probably a couch. Before you can feel any further, the back of your seat creaks as weight, as weight is pressed against it. <laughs> is this an interrogation room? Blinding light 
as your uh, has your hands clambering over your face as the grinning visage of Red Glare leers dangerously over you, with a flashlight pointed to literally right in your face. Her boot is pressed into the fabric attached to whatever's supporting your back, holding her weight as she leans in close. You can practically feel her breath this close, staring up into her peeled maw of glinting fangs designed for shredding as a dangerous laugh cackles out from her. And you thought this would be easy. Ooh, I like the music. Ooh, I like this. <laughs> Don't lick me, please. <clears throat> oh, she is, she is a pyro, fuck. Liar! I expected better from my superiors, given this, their seemingly limitless resources and sizable workforce. Certainly, there must have been someone amongst their ranks more befitting of a task such as, my, as myself, but I said you, as if. <coughs> Don't you know? <laughs> you almost got me, I'll admit that. No, you had to go on and write yourself out with your connections. I'm not stupid. You will speak to me clearly and honestly, and none unless spoken to. Are we clear? If you could nod your head any harder, it would come toppling off your body. Who employed you? I know a spy when I see one, whoever you are. Mongrel, mongrel, she says. It was like, obvious. You, you, sticking out like a sore thumb, just waiting for the unsuspecting troll to trust enough, you enough with their intel and whoever might be left, just so you can snuff them out. Sickening. I have to spill your blood now just to relish in the broken chains of your scheme. And you thought you could best me. Ha! You are, you are bugging, dude. That voice does not match, Skater Girl. Fuck. Hold on, hold on. Time out, please. Hang on. Flag on the field. That's just not true. It's just, just false. You promise. You were just as excited to talk to her as she was to talk to you uh, before all this came about. Out of nowhere, if she was nervous, she could have just said so. Any proof she wants, she can have. I invite you to my hive, and you lie. <laughs> you lie to my face. Lawless heretic. No, seriously. No one hired you, and even if someone had hired you, you would never do something like that. She's right, the Empire sending out spies to try and some of the rest of the movie, where they're already stuff. Uh, such, such a loss of speaking with not, not much being asked for, just a step towards peace and com community, a touch of empathy is all we can ask for, right? Does that sound right? Titles. I want to hear all of their titles. And, oh, excuse me. And if you know their hatch names, I want to hear them too. The Silence, Dolorosa, Huntress, and Psionic. They were really touchy about names, but you learned the three of them, Cancri, Parm, and Mulan. Psionic's name might have started with an M or something, but you uh, could also have just misheard. You really don't know. You were just friends, not family. Her expression stills with consideration, filling her whole chest, tension drifting from her with a sigh as she gives you a bit more space. With an M. Good to know. But you still aren't off the hook. If you start playing any funny games, then I'll have your blood pooling across my floor before you can even make it to the front door. How did you meet them? That's a funny story. See, we gotta get into like time travel and like, like interdimensional travel. It's gonna be a whole fucking thing. The whole alien thing and hopping through time thing really is true despite being the most unbelievable thing about all of this, meaning you actually managed to meet all four of her friends in very different placements of time. Technically, you have known the silence since Rosa found him. You only event eventually spoke with Rosa and him much later by their time, but seconds by your own. The Sionic you met at the sermon, and you met the hunters out in the woods. You tastefully leave out the mural she crafted in her, uh, uh, in her agonizing solitude. You aren't trying, uh, trying to lie to her now. You're probably the least threatening thing on this planet. Why would you be here to take her down? Plus, if she really thought that, why would she invite you to her hive? I wanted you to think I could trust you, clearly. I knew the truth wouldn't come out of you, uh, of you till your life was at my mercy. I didn't care what I, uh, I didn't care what I said or showed you because I had plans to tear you apart excruciatingly if you were a spy. I've seen worse tricks than the Empire using an alien as a spy. But fine, say you did know them. Why are you wearing his clothes like that out in public? If you want to wear them, at least change your cloak pin. Clothing isn't something that you come by often, more like it is unsuspectingly no thrown at you during peril, and you just kind of... Keep it? I mean, yeah, that's kind of just what MSPA Reader does. They just kind of just, <laughs> they're given clothes and they're like, I will hang on to this forever. <laughs> really, you didn't mean to offend anyone or stick out. You only recently found out that he died. Uh, if she could just relax, maybe the two of you could talk and she could see you were someone to be trusted. So if she could just turn on the lights and sit with you, maybe that would go better than this interrogation. Her eyes lower at you from behind her shades. Not to say that this interrogation hasn't been one of the better ones you've, uh, you've had. It just isn't your preferred method of communication. Well, you say, what does she say? Another stretch of silence fills the space between you two before the blazing light from her flashlight clicks off. Her weight eases from off from beside you and a clap rings out through the room, lights clicking on and filling the room with a glow. <coughs> this is very cheery music. You pick yourself up from the couch and fix your stretched robes back into place, taking the time to regroup. Arms, check. Legs, check. Arms, check. Bowls check. 
Vodka, check. We're good. Nothing is bleeding and both your feet are safely on the floor. In front of you sits a finely crafted coffee table, carved from a solid piece of wood and littered with paperwork. Everything from bounties to printed emails come, come scattered across the table. Pierced into, this, into the pulpy flesh at the table's center sits a curled wanted poster, a dagger pinned directly into Mind Fang's pictured chest. You attempt to smile to ease her worry, patting at the couch cushion next to you and beckoning for her to sit. You hope you seem inviting enough for her to consider joining you. With a wary side eye, the teal eventually joins at your side, sitting a safe distance away and crossing her legs neatly. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> Fine. If you think that talking would have somehow convinced me of your innocence, then get going. If not, we'll handle the uh, we'll handle that bridge when we come to it. Brutally. I love this sprite. I love it so much. Right. You finally have her in a spot where the two of you can talk. Where do you even start? Maybe something to break the ice with her? She asked you how you met them, so wouldn't it be fair to, uh, for you, uh, uh, fair of you to ask her the same? Something happy to talk about. Maybe then she'd let down this flighty wall? But the question remains. Who? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let's go with the psionic. Well, the psionic ends with a bad one, sort of psionic, actually, technically. Hmm. Maybe let's start with a psionic. Yeah, what, what's the time? What is the time? 40... 45... Psionic! While the silence may be what ties you two together, she seems to have an interest... I think I fucked up. I, I'm already regretting my decision. <coughs> she seems to have some interest in the psionic. Mentioning the detail of his name had caught her attention, and you wonder if she had, had as hard a time getting to know him as you did. What's the deal with that? What's the deal with that? How did she meet him? You see her weight shift uncomfortably in her seat, a distance passing her eyes as she glances away from you. I don't see why we have to talk about that. Isn't there anything else you'd like to know? Well, how is that fair? You told her how you met him. Friends don't keep secrets from each other. Ha! <laughs> My friends are probably the people I keep the most secrets from. Fine. I'll tell you, but only one time. While you may not know as a psionic is the best of his kind to ever exist, dude was reaching some levels of rad. He was aided by the silence to free himself from his chains of servitude and <clears throat> welcome his life outside of his master's order. Mad props to him, crushing it. Unfortunately, that made him a wanted man by the word, by the words of the law I've sworn to. By some stupid stroke of luck or fate, I caught sight of him shortly after he became wanted. When I took back on it, when I look back on it now, I'm lucky I wasn't burnt to a crisp. I cornered him. Threats of spilt blood, a massacre on my lips if he didn't come quietly. His treasonous deeds against the throne would not go unnoticed, and blah blah blah. I wanted him to suffer for the misdeeds he spread through our land. Little did I know, people in my position were, the, uh, were of the many misdeeds propagating misery. Thankfully, he had a family to care for him, and the silence had found us after his absence. Absence! It was so strange, like he was completely unaware of the bloodshed about to go down between us, <clears throat> and would have put himself in the middle of, the, of that danger uh, time and time again without hesitation. He spoke to me. For the first time, it felt like I was being talked to like a person, not like a little service team meant to be walked all over and personally secret, sec uh, personal secretary to any purple that comes their way. He told me to look at my choices in the mouth and realize the gravity of what had become of my actions. Why did I feel that it was uh, that it was make or break time? Why did I feel there there and then I needed to take him in regardless of the peril it, uh, it put either of us through? And for what? This man to be enslaved? Did I feel proud? Was I happy with what I had become? And is this what I really wanted to do for the world? I broke. Everything that kept me up at night had been ripped from the earth and present presented to me, raw and undeniable. I let him go, obviously. I demanded to know more, to understand how I could possibly live by the philosophy he lived by. How in this world I was forced to partake in could I ever see to, uh, this continuously? Silence cannot st uh, stay and speak for me as long as I would have liked, but despite my pursuit of him, the psionic agreed to stay and answer some of my more basic questions. And as you can expect, he really didn't answer much at all. But... She falls to look at you... Uh, she fa fails, excuse me, to look at you the whole time she retells the sweet memory. Her wistful gaze is miles from the walls of her living room and recalling a distant, neglected feeling. <laughs> the dude was obviously was absolutely hilarious. I couldn't hold a serious conversation for him, for, with him for the life of me. I don't even know how long we spoke for, but he eventually told me if I really wanted to know more, I should just go to the sermon the silence had left to, which he was totally adorable, so. <laughs> her cheeks flush with a bit of color, she recalls the story, a softer smile meeting her dark lips. Like, of course I accepted. <clears throat> but I went to a sermon, and there were so many people there. I could tell everyone that looked at me suspect, suspect that I was an agent, but I don't know, man. It was something different. Usually when I see that many trolls surrounding someone, that means ripping a clown off a, a corpse or a street fight. 
I went in and it was amazing. I've witnessed gatherings of clowns many times, and there was nothing even close to that. It was nothing. Like, it was nothing like any sort of sermon I've seen. He spoke of our world, but in a way I had never dreamed. A world where we lived in peace, and the worth of our lives was not valued based on our blood, but is it valued with a universal weight for every person, regardless of their status. I knew these things in the back of my mind. I've wondered if the laws I was implementing really served an idea of justice, or if my true role was, the, was uh, to inflict oppression of our people. But when you hear someone else say that everything you have been taught is a systematic brainwashing to fertilize a corrupt empire weeding through the galaxies, it really weighs on you. It was beautiful and crushing. A world where blood could just be blood and we would all be equal. Justice could serve its true purpose, dethroning the wicked from their ways of depravity. I was not seen as peace and nothing near justice. I was fear. I'll never forget the way it felt in my stomach, like some greasy-ass grub loaf all turned out and nasty inside over what I had been long before graduation. It's been approximately, like, hella time since then, but it still hits me all the same. Like, psych, everything you knew was a lie! It ate me so much I searched the whole city for them the next night. They only stayed for a few days, but I spent as much time as I could with them, for as long as they would let me. If it was within my power, I would. <clears throat> Nothing. It's not important. Look, you wanted to know uh, how we met, and that's that's that. Take it and take it and run, dude. The calm she had sunken into bristled, as if snapping back to attention. No, no, this was good. You were getting somewhere. You were learning so much about her, and finally, you were seeing that it was uh, what it was like to for other people to be touched by your friends. You too was touched by them, experienced his word, and it left you breathless at times. His heart was filled with an overwhelming sense of good, and the people around him anchored to his side with such unwavering loyalty and love. It was like nothing you had ever seen. Nothing she had uh, likely ever seen, too. They were special. It's okay to get sentimental. You have no idea how long it's been, but it's okay to talk about it. By the way, how long has it been? Just, you know, just a question. Time's a little blurry for me. She suddenly gets up from beside you, crossing her arms over her chest and wandering over to the large balcony opening from her living room. You really don't know how to, uh, don't know how to push it. D uh, you really know how to push it, don't you? Learning how to read a room, buzzkill. Or learn how to, fuck, I can't read. Fuck, I can't read. Learn how to read a room, buzzkill. Oh, yeah, you feel like garbage without for a while. <laughs> that, yeah, that feels, that feel good. Your friends are dead. How long ago was that? Yeah, how long, how, how long has it been since you watched your friends die? <laughs> Save that, uh, to play and repeat in your head while you're trying to sleep. Oh, fuck, boy, that's too relatable. Shit. You just want to have an idea of how much time has passed by her standards. I just don't think we have to talk about it anymore than that. Don't you know enough? Why does that all this have to be about me, dude? Upsetting her was never the intention, but it's clear the topic is a little sensitive for her. She said she hadn't spoken to anyone in a while. Had she ever... talked about it? Was she there? Whipping around to face you, her cheeks flushed with teal. A fence, uh, swiped over the pool of her lips. What's your fucking problem? Jeez! Don't even be so intense! Spitting everywhere, they. <laughs> Look, you just don't- you just want to know more! They were your friends, too! You didn't get to say goodbye, knowing even a little bit would at least put you at ease. You were kind of a multifaceted creation. These things eat at you. I'm sorry. Truth be told, pretending it didn't happen makes it easier. I always get so upset when I try to come to terms with it, so I just... Don't? Yeah. Oh, no. Well, what do you normally do when something makes you upset? Probably talk to my Lucis, or I go hang out back. Why? Now, this is just an idea, but has she ever considered talking about it and doing those things? Maybe it would make it easier to get it off her chest? Typically, you like to keep it on the down low, but you make for a pretty great listener. Why don't we try... <laughs> Time with mom or backyard shenanigans? Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, let's go... Backyard... Time with mom... Oh, wait. Time with mom might create a weird paradox? Because... Pyral Sprite... Pyral Spite would... Have recognized the MS MSPA are in the summoner timeline, right? Let's try time with mom. Time with mom. At 48.30. Now, hold on. Before we do anything, did she say spend time with her Lucis? You are but a simple idiot. <laughs> yes, thank you. And just want to make sure you weren't mistaken. What was her Lucis again? She's a dragon, of course. Whoop, oh, shit. Hang on. Those aren't common, right? Ha! <laughs> Unless you have a dragon in your back pocket, she's the only one I've ever heard of. No wonder it had been so easy to pass her test the first time. She already knew you. What could ever keep you, keep you from such a beautiful creature a second time? Not a damn thing, that's what! <laughs> Let's go talk with the Lucis there, then! If she gets uncomfortable, you can stop, but at least your Lucis will be there with her? 
Yeah, it doesn't sound seem so bad. I can totally handle it. Then what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? I'm going to reference Power Thirst at every fucking opportunity I can. And you're going to like it. <laughs> what if everything you ever wanted came in a rocket can? <clears throat> the two of you make your way once again into the great outdoors. Red Glare takes the lead, and rather than taking you, uh, you taking you, fuck, rather than taking you to the back of her hive, walks you along the little offshoot path leading up towards the large barn. Your eyes travel to the darkness creeping from for, the darkness creeping form and, uh, form, from the inside. Oh boy, it says form, and my brain could not process that. Juxtaposed against hay bales towards the front, catching glimmers of moonlight. You aren't going to be the first one in there. At the entrance, you hesitate, and she stops with you. Hold on. There are a few ground rules we have to go over. First, whatever you do, don't stare directly into her eyes, and I mean that. You can, you can and will go blonder than seconds. Trust me. Second, do not get any closer to her than I instruct you. She is very protective, and if she sees me walk right up to her with someone she doesn't know, she's going to flip her shit. Lastly, relax. She can sense it if you don't. Now walk behind me. Holy fuck, she came with a manual? <laughs> Rufio didn't come with a manual? <laughs> That's very true. Rufio was like, hey man, you want to go see my dragon? And, and then Rufio was like, fuck yeah, I want to go see your dragon. And we went and saw the dragon, and it was awesome. <laughs> Did he even know she could make you go blind? Could she have made you blind that whole time? Oh man, maybe meeting her again is going to be harder than you thought. Except technically this is us meeting her for the first time, because Rufio didn't get Pyro Spite until after Red Glare's death. Red Glare flips, flips light switch, by assuming the light switch, just beyond the entryway. Light floods the cavernous space, and right smack in the middle of the hayline floor, you spot a familiar sight. There she is, there's the big, there's Dragon Mom! A large opalescent dragon snoozes peacefully, her wings folded lightly to her body, and large spiny tail curled snugly around herself. With each breath, you see the creature's diaphragm expand and fall, heavy breaths easily heard through the room. You take in her majesty for a moment, before turning to Red Glare, now fully eyeing you with a grin replacing her previous distress. That's my Lucis. She's rad. Stay put. She doesn't tell you twice. She paces towards the great beast, approaching her calmly and without an ounce of uncertainty. Red Glare extends a hand to the dragon, sliding it over the bridge of her, of her snout. Fingers curling inward, she wafts her knuckles near her nostrils, till eventually a set of scarlet eyes slide open. Blown pupils scan the, the barn before setting on her ward, shrinking then into sharp slits. Awakened from her restful slumber, she, je uh, she jets a puff of scalding air from her nose, the heat reaching even where you stand and warming your legs. Red Glare is not too far from you, but the words humming from her lips are inaudible. That's alright. Their sweet little greetings meant only for the large beast watching her with focused admiration. Moments after their intimate exchange, Red Glare turns to you, beckoning you over to join her side as she steps back from the dragon's sight, patting Pyro's spite on her neck affectionately. Pyro, this is... little... homie. God, little homie. <laughs> little homie, this is Pyro Spite. Go ahead and touch her. Now it's your turn for the giant dragon to stare you down. Her head lifts as you step near her, her throat bobbing with breath as you reached forward and pet her the same way Red Glare had done just moments before. The dragon's skin is surprisingly warm as you finally settle, her hand over, settle your hand over her snout, slick scales gracing your palm as you pet her. Good dragon. Nice... Dragon? That's, um... Guys, I gotta admit something. I haven't seen How to Train Your Dragon. Is that a reference? Is that a line from the movie? I'm a kind of old, in case you weren't aware. <coughs> Must be the robes. She's got a great sense of smell, since dragons hatch blind. Yeah, so you've been told. So... Does she think she would be okay to talk about it? Even for at least a little? With her here and all? You gesture to the dragon with gusto. <laughs> Pyro Spite lets out a reverberating clicking noise, like something out of the latest Jurassic World movies. Would MSPAR know about Jurassic World? I feel like they would only know about When did Jurassic World come out? Fuck. Her head settles calmly on the ground and watches the both of you with lazy curiosity. I guess so, man. Why don't you start off someplace comfortable? Then you can work into the, th into the thing she wants to get off her chest now that she has the chance, or she could go at whatever pace feels best. You're right. I know logically you're right. <clears throat> I've studied the minds of trolls long enough to know it helps. It comes with being a legislacerator. I guess I can start by saying I saw it all with my own eyes. 
I saw the life leave his eyes with the final breaths of the sermon, and I heard their screams. It keeps me from sleeping. It makes me feel cheated or something beautiful. I wish them all well, and not a day... Uh, and not a day has passed since I had good, uh, since I said goodbye to them that I haven't thought about them. I wanted everything they had with each other, but I don't, but I had a duty and a purpose here. I could do more good for them on the inside than I could have ever done for them leaving this all behind. It was better to blend in. It was better to push on and take care of my mom. So I did, and my hands were clean. I excelled just like I was supposed to. After all, I kind of crushed it at the academy. Everyone knew I was going to be something of a badass. I was sort of built for working myself into the system and raising hell slowly and effectively. The only ties this could be here now, the questions she would have for her. It would be the world to her, uh, and more, to hear such genuine hopes for the very thing she worked so hard for. If only it didn't come with such a sad price tag. That's what I'm doing now. Every day I want to go farther so I can be something for them. Some days are, are easier than others. I've got people to keep me busy. I can't help but think about how they're still out there. I'm sitting here so comfortable. I want to become something because I want to see at least one of them again. If only I'd become important enough. If I can rise up, I'll get the chance to see him again. And maybe I can apologize. I know where he is. There's nothing I can do for them, and I know they're out there. While I'm hanging out here with the goons that tore, that, that tore them apart. I did this to myself, which is the worst part. I was proud to be a legislator. Proud of the things I did and what I would become before I knew them. I knew everything I wanted. I love Alternia. I love my home and the possibilities of our growth. We could have been something. We are subpar, and my success is paved in the blood and torture of countless people before me. Every role model I've ever had is an elitist asshole that I want to kick in the teeth. Her cheeks flushed with embarrassment, knowing she was getting much deeper than she, uh, than she was used to. But I fell in love with the idea of them. I adored the law and the service of justice to my people. I was taught that I was being everything I could be for them, and I believed that. So purpose was marinated in my bones, and, <clears throat> and my dreams had reached the stars with a glory of purpose. I fell for the world that I could be... Uh, that could be mine because I was a, I was a blind, ignorant asshole. I knew my place and I was happy with that. I did everything I, uh, a little service to you should and it's not fair. I wanted the four of them. I wanted everything they could have uh, given me and the worlds they crafted for me out of visions and wishes. They gave me a hope and breathed a fire in me I had never known. Real purpose. <coughs> Excuse me. Real purpose and not the fictitious propaganda I had been school fed before I could crawl. They did nothing but dream of a world where trolls wouldn't be left to die over someone else's fealty to an insufferable sea witch. Fuck her imperial condescension, and fuck the Grand Highland too. Teal tears were building in her eyes now. You hadn't expected such, expected such a dump of emotion, but the walls of a dam been had been broken, and it looks like it was for the better. He didn't want to hurt anyone. He would have never. And I just stood there and watched. I watched because I was scared. He suffered for all of us to see. I heard his final sermon, and I drank his last words, and they boiled on my tongue like bitter acid because I knew I was weak. I was weak, and he would have... He would have forgiven me for that. But I can never forgive myself. I bet my money on a losing Barkby's to play an unwinnable game. I have no right to be so hurt. I should have been more. She's right, but she should think about why he would have forgiven her, why any of them would have forgiven her in the end. They knew that they signed up for... Uh, they knew what they signed up for from the start. They knew it would come at the, to that point, and they had prepared for it. She would have died if she had stepped in, and they knew that as well. And they, and they knew that as well as she did. You're sure they understood that at the time too. You can only do what you are capable of, and now she can live in their memory. She can still be successful and find ways to benefit their cause when she's promoted upwards. The world they spoke about existed beyond Cancri's words, and is still possible beyond him. He wasn't the leader of anything. He was. It was everyone's movement. It is still possible. Justice for them feels so far away. I talk big, but I'm still young, honestly. I just turned 12, and I still have a long way to go. Lately, it feels like I just can't get things right. I have this thorn in my side that has been ma mis uh, making my work harder than ever. A thorn in her side? She rolls her eyes, pushing her glasses up to wipe her eyes before crossing her arms and leaning against her Lucis's shoulder. There's this... self-entitled bitch. I kind of hate her guts. The sound of her name in my mouth makes me sick. I've been port hopping for this bitch and the, for Peregris, and I can't seem to get a hold of her. <clears throat> I thought I had her once, but I only took her nasty little claw. I wasn't able to take her in. I wasn't prepared for a crew that time, but next time... Next time she's mine. <clears throat> the point is, I haven't been able to get my hands on her. I'm sick of mind fanging her cheap games. She thinks... Uh, she thinks she lives are something to play with and a story to tell, and I can't wait to see her hang for her crimes. After terrorizing her, her, our waters for so long, she deserves to be brought in. One of these days, I hope to do it, too. 
If it was my way, I'd... A chiming noise suddenly cuts through the air of a ca uh, casual conversation between the two of you. Py uh, spites. <laughs> Pyro Spite's eyes open from her slumber, her body shifting to jostle regular forward as she some fumbles to take her palm husk out of her vest. Excuse me, this is a work call. <coughs> Pan, how are you now? When the call is answered, a familiar image of a hulking troll with horns to the heavens is displayed across her screen. Violet splattered over his chest and his hands ringing with a dripping towel in them. Good evening, sir. I'm surprised to hear from you. A video call is a bold choice for you. Is there any way I can assist you? You seem a bit... busy. <coughs> <laughs> MC Pyrap Sprite. <laughs> busy, no. The old fish was just... <clears throat> was just a bit of a... It was... Uh, the old fish was a bit of a real motherfucking gusher! I've got something for you, girl. Something for you to really sink your fucking teeth into. I suppose that explains the violet better than a pe uh, than a uh, pale would. And I am I to assume you have already found a replacement to take off take on his duty. He said, "Pop between my hands, like overripe and motherfucking fruit." Don't remember it with your fickle fucking nagging. Who will take the helm of this position? Sounds like a like a heaping sack of not my fucking problem. He was due to in his age. That'll make me regret this the blessing I'm about to bestow on you, little Spitfire. Apologies, sir. I was only thinking of the safety of the entire fucking planet, is all. I didn't mean with that crusty ass for reasons of goodwill and pleasure. The wily narc came to play a pussyfooted game! Dragging me into his womanly problems and thinking he can fucking use me for his wills! He hadn't even come with the offering a good motherfucking company or a joke prepared! Oh, that's when he killed fucking, uh, Dualscar, huh? Shit. But that's not the fucking point of it all. For you, girl, I have something. I've been hearing his name out of your motherfucking maw for way too damn long. He came to me with complaints of a feisty sea bitch. If I'm mistaken, you had the real gall to dismember. Mind thing. What about her? <coughs> Good fucking high blood's gonna murder me. Her most recent location, as well as the rest of, <clears throat> of his yammerings, uh, have been sent to your e, uh, e mall by Xerxes over here. The bounty is yours if you got the fucking spunk for it! Fuck me. If your little tea lass really thinks it was, <clears throat> it has what it takes to bring in the cerulean drippings, you got till sunrise to accept where it's being passed along. Maybe this time you can bring in more than a fucking frond stump, hog! Your teasing is unnecessary, but I'll see to your instruction <coughs> effective immediately. Don't worry, sir. She's in capable hands. In fact, pull something together and I will have her dangling before sunrise, too. Mark me. That's the spirit. Young and stupid! A round of gruff laughter and honking passes through the speaker before the sound is cut with her screen returning to normal. The two of you sit in stunned silence before she turns to you with a huge grin. Holy fucking shit, dude! Did you hear that? Her location, do you know what this means? What? What? And Tarabang! It means I'm going to be the one to bring her in. Are you listening to this? It's all in order, you see? I finally bring her in, and people finally notice me a little more. They see what I can do, and they know I'm someone to be taken seriously. Everyone will know how much of a fucking boss I am. It is a step in the right direction. I bet if I get her fast enough, we can hold a trial before she even knows what hit her. You're right. He would want me to move on and start taking things seriously. I am going to be something. Starting with this bitch, I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to see my friend again, and I'm going to make all, uh, all this up to them. For them. Whoa, no, take a step back there real quick, Missy. Was she really going to just rush in like this and not even think about it? There's a reason she keeps getting away, right? Maybe she should come up with a plan. I have a plan, dude. It's to kick ass and take names. Everything is going to be fine. I can't possibly pass up an opportunity like this. I have her coordinates and direct order to bring her in. This is my time to shine. Look, you can even stay here and rest up. Eat something. I don't care. I know you're, I know you're drifting. Just take a load off here and I'll see you when I get back. Then we can talk about anything you want to do with them. I already know I'm going to be on my way to avenging them after this. Like I said, she will be done for uh, before sunrise. No. No, something about this doesn't seem right. The story is unfolding all at once, but nothing seems to add up the way it was supposed to. She's on her way to apprehend Mindfang, but... But Summoner had Pyrospite. And that was before he met Mindfang. If Mindfang was still alive when he had Pyrospite, then... Where was Red Glare? What was going to happen to her? I've got the e -mall. If I go now, <clears throat> there is no way she can escape in time. I'm going to sink that spider into the sea and have her begging for my mercy. What a shame it is that, <clears throat> that there will be no rest for uh, such a vi uh, vicious creature. She is just one of the many, but her downfall will be more delicious. 
What if something bad happens to her? Nothing bad is going to happen to me. I don't know if you've heard, but I am the neophyte Red Glare. Soon to be the best Legis Lacerator to have ever lived. Dut uh, dutifully ready to fuck your shit. Does that sound like the kind of girl that have something bad happen to her? She climbed on a pyro spite's back with a gleaming sense of triumph. But all you feel is dread. It sinks heavy like a stone in your gut, and something inside you is screaming at you to stop her. To keep her hive, uh, to keep her hive, keep her home, got it. Keep her hive and make sure, uh, make sure she lives out every one of her fantastic dreams. Words die in your throat as you look up at her beaming form, knowing deep in your heart that there is no stopping her. There likely never would be with this girl. She was somewhere else. Just promise you'll come back? Of course I will, little homie. I'm supposed to be desperate for greatness. Come on, Pyro Spite. Wait, before she goes? What now? What is her name? Like, her real name. It's Latula. Careful, be careful, Latula. Can do. Catch you later, nerd! Catch you later, losers. Oh, no! And then she goes and she dies. Fuck. This is gonna be a two-hour one, huh? It's gonna be even longer than that son of a bitch. We're already an hour in. And we're an hour in. Darkness, darkness, darkness. Set things straight. Zip on past all this. Signless. We did the psionic last time. Oh, wait. What the hell was that? Shit. I'm just going to go 105 for the ending. And now we're going to go 106 for the signless. <coughs> Why not start with what had drawn her to you? Just by the clothing each of you wore, it's easy to see the two of you have been connected all this time by means unbeknown to each other. While you're adorned in his robes, you still aren't sure of the purpose of her necklace. How did she meet the silence in the first place? Isn't she... like a cop? She deadpans at you, lifting a hand and tilting her glasses down to meet your eye. Nah, dude, the bodysuit is just a fashion statement, not a uniform. I am the neophyte regular, soon to be the best legislacerator to have ever lived, dutifully ready to fuck your shit! Oh, wow. Huh, interesting that the line's there, too. That was so close to being really good. Yeah, right, CG? Pyrotechnics free of charge. In short, you aren't wrong. I had encountered Kankri once before uh, before a true meeting. You see, he kept me making he kept me from making a really heinous choice. The bereavement I feel when I consider how close I came to making a great mistake, it's astounding. He had treated me with kindness before he even knew what I was going uh, what was going on around him. The first time the two of us met, it was pretty brief. I'm not sure I would have had the chance to learn more if it wasn't for his friend staying after the fact. He invited me to a small meeting uh, they would hold that same night and told me if, <clears throat> if I wanted to hear more, I should come. Her cheeks flushed with a bit of color as she recalls the story, a softer smile meeting her dark lips. Like, of course I accepted. <clears throat> but I went to a sermon and there were so many people there ripping up a clown course street fight. Okay, this is all the same then. Yeah, okay, that's all the same. Backyard shenanigans then! Wait, 107.30? I love this music, too. Do, do, do. Backyard shenanigans! Nothing helps the soul like the outdoors. Maybe some fresh air will clear up her feelings and remove some of the emotional blockage? What sort of outdoor hobbies does she typically get up to now? Uh, get to, uh, get to any, uh, anyway, I do words good. Shut up. <laughs> well, I have one that I really like, but it's sort of embarrassing once you see how much I put into it. I was uh, much more into it when I was younger and still in school, but I still make sure to get out there at least twice a week. It would be a shame to see all my sick skills get rusty. I can even show you a thing or two. Are we gonna go fucking shred? Are we gonna do some doing some rad skate skatesers? I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't skate. <laughs> I'll just have to get you my old helmet. Helmet. Without it, oh, fucking there's a half pipe. <laughs> Without answering you, uh, she leads you uh, back out of her hive, bypassing the path leading into the barn, and instead taking you around to the back of the hive. What you find back here is pleasantly surprising considering all the options that seem viable on this hell planet. What seems to be a tiny personal skate park has been built into the back of her hive, a decent-sized bowl built into the pavement, as well as a few well-loved ramps for- Oh, that explains all the concrete around her home. Yep. <clears throat> a few well-loved ramps for her to, to use. Tealbloods really don't seem to have it that bad, do they? Before you say anything, I know it isn't how we are supposed to use this ancient four-wheel device, but they are just so fucking sick. 
I used to use mine to get around the academy, some of the highest marks that school <clears throat> had ever seen, and they had me in the, uh, the office almost every day for something to, something so lame. Like dunking on some dorks and grinding off the benches they were sitting on, or skating in common walkways was really going to hurt anyone. I don't think I would have been uh, someone if they weren't so uptight about the whole thing. She passes a large outdoor storage bin as she leads you, st uh, st uh, she leads you, stopping to open it and take out a helmet, which she pauses to you before retrieving two skateboards as well. One, sig one significantly smaller than the other, likely one of her older ones. Holding a board in your hands, you watch as she uh, turns over the one she's holding in hers to inspect the trucks and spins on each, uh, and spin each of the wheels. I, I don't know if I can see that. Dang it, nope. I like to come here whenever, uh, whenever thinking about them or thinking about anything becomes too much. Nothing feels better after I come home after, from a hard day, especially when I spent the whole thing messing up. Lately, I feel like that's all I'm doing. I was there when it happened. You want to talk about it, right? I was there. She folded the board against her side, meeting your eyes earnestly. It's been long enough to make the movement feel dead, but not long enough for anyone to forget. There are days where I can't sleep because they're, <clears throat> they're all I can see. Every time I close my eyes, I can see their faces, and the pain I saw in each of them until those last moments. Until he breathed his last breath and they were all taken away. I took skating up after that, even when I had, uh, when I'd failed them, and even when I can't manage to come uh, come high without a failed game of cat and mouse with a self-absorbed pirate, I can at least do this. I at least have something I can do and be proud of that isn't a, a, a systemic oppression. Hey, don't talk like that. Pro skater or not, she's still one of the raddest people you know. There's nothing more radical than going against the government for real. She managed to live beyond them for a reason. She was meant for something. She needs. She just needs to wake up out of this funk and see it. You two came out here to have fun, didn't you? Didn't we come out here to talk? What we talk about isn't important. The most important part is not bottling up your emotions and letting yourself process them without pretending they didn't happen. It did happen, and it's heartbreaking. But she's still here. She's still her. And there's so much left for her here to do. That's a good line. I really like that. I didn't deserve this extra time. If there was ever a thing I could have done for the movement, I, it would have been to give them more time. I wish I could have traded their life for mine. Like a true bringer of peace. It would have been just... It would have been the best thing I could have done for the planet. And I and I froze. Like some kind of joke. I don't deserve the forgiveness. I don't even deserve the hope they gave me. Come on, girl, pick your head up. Doesn't she see? <clears throat> they would have wanted her to keep her time. Every person they touched mattered. That was the whole point of it, wasn't it? Every troll's life has meaning. Just because she's left in the aftermath doesn't make her any less worthy of being here. She's been handed the chance to make a uh, change on a silver platter, and she's going to take it, right? She is worth it. She has all the tools for the job. She just needs to go in and crush it. Come on, let's see it. It's too many numbers. <laughs> Brady, that, that's that's her fucking, like, that's her, her quirk. Also, hang on. Have I? I need, to, I need to update you to a mod, I think. I don't know how to do that. I haven't done that yet. I'll do that later. Anyway. Yeah, that's just how, that's that's her typing quirk. Considering your words, she walks up to the rim of the bowl built behind her hive, letting her eyes wander over it before she pulls the board from her side. All of a sudden, she tossed down her board and bomb dropped it. Bomb dropped in. As if the board... <laughs> As an extension of herself, she comes up at the other side, grinding along the room before dropping back down once more, riding along the walls and carving a few rainbows across the concrete while uh, pumping her knees before popping up and committing to a tucked knee invert. These are these are words. A few more absolutely sick tricks later, she pops up beside you again, her hair frazzled but a grin. A grin plastered over her face. You know what? I am worth it. I'm going to be everything and more. I'm the best thing the Alternian justice system has uh, has ever seen. The Empire has nothing on me. If I play my part, I can go far enough to do some real damage. We've lost them, but we haven't lost our hope. We haven't lost the possibility of tomorrow. They would want it this way, for change to be <clears throat> made long after they have been gone. A charming noise suddenly cuts through the air of casual conversation between the two of you. She hurriedly sets down her board and pulls her husk top out of her vest. It's my boss. Your boss can wait. Yeah, yeah, let's kind of figure where this is going to go. 
We are supposed to be shredding it. Plus, how are you going to get any shredding done if she is all preoccupied? Take a breather. Teach your friend how to skate. Yeah, he can wait. I'm going to teach my friend how to skate, especially after how dope you've been to me. Wait, did she really mean that? Are we friends? Of course we are friends. You passed, I guess. <clears throat> I guess I don't have to kill you after all. <laughs> Full-scale radical bros. Full-scale radical bros. Hell yeah. Fuck yes, look at that. We got a fucking sick high five and everything. Dope. Dope, 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 dope. What is that, 1.14.30 again? 14.30 for the ending. Hell yeah. What is happening? Okay, so Brady, it is way too much to explain to you what is happening. Basically, she's a lawyer cop who is trying to beat the system of oppression from the inside. <laughs> that's the that's the rundown of that character. We are now going to play her boss. We're going to go befriend her boss, who is a murderous religious clown. <laughs> and this is going to be 1 15 15. We are now starting volume 10, The High Blood. We live in a clown society. Content warning violence, bigotry, language, implied eating of MSPA reader. That one's a little interesting. Cult indo indoctrination, depersonalization, manipulation, mind control. A whole bunch of shit for that one. Holy cow. <coughs> so, uh, my voice is going to die on this one. So much of your travels lately have felt desolate. Not just in emotional content, mind you. Though that's also weighing like a stone in you. What else is new? Ooh, this is cool. But no, the settings themselves. The wasteland of a blue desert, arid camps far from any surveillance, self-imposed hermetic mo monuments, and true wilderness. The last time you were a around active civilization was with the signless and his family. And even then, it was discreet and deliberately sidestepped the buzz of public life. It's jarring compared to your prior experiences with, out experiences with Outglen, where people sure did live in a society. Okay, but seriously, what the hell is going on with the cities right now, in this time period? Well, time period, relatively. <clears throat> is this just an adult troll thing? Like tigers? Once they grow up, they scatter far and wide, save for the strongest of bonds? You're not convinced. With the exception of Dualscar, who bootlicker boot -licker <laughs> that he wa uh, is, is still a bit of an odd bird. Everyone so far has been marked, beyond the pale in some way or another. Even Darklear, another bootlicker, sigh, sabotaged his chances of participating in what you used to think of as a, think of as a normal troll lifestyle. Since Outlet is already on your mind and you don't have enough context for any other urban center, you summon up the image and concentrate. I see no! <laughs> okay. Okay. Drop. Ooh. Ooh. It's kind of folky. I kind of like it. Oh, yeah. It kind of reminds me of Voltaire, actually. Anyone that listens to Aurelia Voltaire's music. <clears throat> <coughs> There's a lot of faces here, also. There's a face down here in, like, the middle right. There's a face over here on the left. It's kind of unsettling. And here you are. Oh, hey, there's still a city here. Or rather, was a city here. And future Outlet is still here? Ugh. Point is, oh, hey, trolls, lots of them. Or, well, more of them doing daily life things that, like, just walking on sidewalks around each other. You stay off to the side of an alley until you get your bearings, because you know better than to just uh, lollygag in the middle of the street when it's publicly acceptable to put, turn people into throw pillows. You look around a little more closely from your spot. Chixie, how are you now? Jenna? Oh, Jenna, I gotcha. Now this, this is what you were missing. You have to admit you've been aching for the dom domesticity, that's a word, fucking love it, of people just, why is, that, why is that period weird? Hanging around each other. The bustle on the street is way busier than you, than you anticipated, and you notice, aside from the obvious technology gap from future outlet, some pretty interesting demographic differences. There are a lot of adults, like almost exclusively adults. There's a nagging thought about where the kids were supposed to live before all the adults were permabanned from Alternia. What you also notice is a decent group of trolls clustered together. Could this be another silence meeting? In broad moonlight at that! You don't know if this is during his movement, but you can't think of many other reasons for an impromptu gathering with no sign of bloodshed. 
you, being small and unassuming, scurry out into the cur uh, current of pedestrians towards the group. As you get closer, you know something. A very important something. There's a gap. There's a space there. There's a lot of purple and face paints. While it isn't everyone, clouds make up at least half of the crowd, including the speaker. The remainder are scattered hues. Oh no. We're in GHB. Uh, Trixie. You don't see anyone below Olive, though. No, yeah, no, clowns aren't even all that all bad. You've met more than a few genuinely decent ones that meet the lowest bar of not being tyrannical, uh, tyrannical assholes. So it's a 50-50 whether these are are the super friendly clowns or demon spawn. <laughs> all in all, pretty standard troll fare. I I would argue that most of the purples we've met are kind of assholes. About the only exception would be Marvis and Karako. Actually, Karako. You hide against, except even then, even in Hive Swap Act 2, Karako was bloodthirsty. Meh. You hide against a tree trunk of a, of a leg and tune uh, into the vendor's words. They're dressed in a ridiculous garish striped suit and have a cane for emphasis as they talk. <coughs> <coughs> Clown preacher. A cleacher. Oh, oh, that feels gross. <coughs> and that's why there's space for all under the canvas right now, see? A special invitation to all hues, tonight only, see? One way or the other, the Dark Carnival reaps a harvest of all us, <clears throat> of us all down to the bottom of the chain, see? A place for everyone, see? Everyone in their place, see? Fucking unity across the spectrum, see? Just because it's the most royal right to ex uh, exercise our power doesn't mean lost souls gotta give in, uh, gotta live in a desolate darkness, see? <coughs> that sounds suspiciously nice, but also creepy and kind of brainwashy. You're reminded of the Juggalo service you attended, but this seems less formal and more word of mouth. And don't dawdle, see? This is a limited fucking offer, see? We're leaving tomorrow, see? Other places to save, see? I fucking hate this guy. So drink your fill while the, with, while the laughs and thrills last, see? And remember, the Grand Hivelet himself is the ringleader of this circus, see? An immediate burst of murmurs ripple through the crowd. The Grand Hivelet? The old scary guy that didn't know how to face how to FaceTime? You've heard, uh, heard tell of his plans, no doubt. Don't let the window of opportunity pass by, <clears throat> pass you by, oh, you're adrift without a rat, see? You could be witnessed by the messiahs themselves, see? <coughs> they swing the cane in a circle to point at various trolls who shift re restlessly as it passes by them by. You don't pick up on all the theology at work here, but it seems, again, friendly and alarming in equal measures. But more importantly, you're tipped off to two things. One, this is a chance to meet the Grand Highblood in person, since he seemed to take a liking to you in the past. Two, all the friendship and love rhetoric of this speech intrigues you. As the group dis There's a little honk there that I missed. As the group disperses, you walk up to the speaker. You're wondering if you could nab one of those flyers? You're hoping to catch him before the service. It's sort of important. The clown looks down at, at you as if not quite registering that you're a person. You're about to repeat yourself when the cold and comprehension switches back to the commercial of warmth and smiles. Of course, of course, see? The carnival's always open to all creatures, see? I'm sure there's a mirthful, mirthful place for a special something like yourself, too, see? You aren't really looking for a place, just a conversation, but you take the flyer handed to you and say goodbye. You feel stares into your into the back of your head as you leave. I have to feel like the stairs aren't going to be the only thing in my back in a few minutes here. In spite of wanting to see the city, you're led towards Outglut's fringes, the suburbs of the future you've yet to build, and the industrial center fades sharply to sparse housing and then sparser. Like all traveling fairs, this is one is this one is deceptively easy to find despite setting up outside the city itself. All roads lead to the circus. You walk up the dirt path to the entrance, an archway, <clears throat> uh, an archway sign marking your passage into the Darkish Carnival. Uh, you suppose all the festive creativity was exhausted on the attractions before they got around to the name. You walk the d uh, through the arch and inside. This doesn't look so bad. Pretty typical carnival. Pretty typical carnival. <coughs> This isn't like the stained glass window and vaulted arch opulence of other uh, clerches you've been to. True to what you were told, this is, well, a traveling circus. A carnival. Even with tents still being hammered into the ground, bo booths to set up, and empty rides that violate safety code, it's busy. The air already smells like burnt sugar, deep fryers, and oh-so-familiar clown sweat. There's enough structure set up that it's disorientingly close to a liminal space, even without crowds to make it impossible to navigate. This is a very liminal, a liminal space image. Clowns scramble around to get work done in the midst of hunk, uh, hunky roughhousing, but don't pay attention to you. No one does. Yet. You only have a few hours left before the Juggalo service. You have no idea where to go, but you think you should decide quickly and be on your way. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Let's go left! Let's turn left. 1, 
There is literally no way to infer which direction is the right choice there. This reminds me of the, um, the circus level in Banjo-Tooie now. <laughs> <coughs> it's anyone's guess how to find anything in a carnival. If you pick a direction, usually these things are set up in a, in a loop, right? So that you end up back where you started, you turn left and start walking along the edge of, of the path. As you walk, you realize you're heading deeper towards the hub of activity buzzing around you. For one, the density of clowns gets steadily higher. Given that it's a large carnival, they still aren't packed together, but it's gone from scattered in individuals to a steady presence hanging around every smaller tent and attraction. I think I picked the right one. Shit. It says you pass a few more stands that you see looming in the distance. A huge big top tent as the epicenter of the whole circus, with signs lit by old-fashioned incandescent bulbs informing crowds that they're headed for the Grand Highland Sermon. I'm digging the music in this, this part, fuck. Two rather big, grotesquely muscular clowns stand either side by the entrance flaps. Face paint and being visibly jacked is a frightening con combination. <laughs> they look like they, would, they could and would pretzel twist you into a giraffe. You'll need to figure out a way to get inside that tent. On the one hand, they do not look like they fuck around and might turn you into performance art the moment they spot you. On the other hand, you've been good at getting people to help you in, un in unlikely situations before, so maybe they won't debone you on sight. Oh boy, sneak in with your immaculate stealth skills, persuade your way in with your impeccable charisma skills. Oh shit, son. Um, hmm. Hmm. Sneaking in. We are not stealthy. We are also not charismatic. Both of these are our dump stats. <laughs> we dumped dexterity and charisma because we're idiots. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Do I feel like approaching? I feel like appro a approaching seems like the wrong choice because it's like, again, okay. A lot of this boils down to passive versus active. Sneaking is sort of more passive, which sounds a lot worse. Whereas talking to someone seems much more active. So I'm gonna try and sneak in and see how this goes. Let's try and sneak in. What is it? 126.10. You analyze the movements of the guards, where they're looking, when they're more focused on small talk than any possible blind spots. You notice that if you hug the side of the tent, there's a loose spot in the tarp just near the entrance that you could slip through. You take a breath and psych yourself up for the stunt you're about to pull. You, your size works to your advantage, letting you shuffle as quickly as possible while the guards honk idly at each other. So far, so good. All that's left for you is to squeeze through. You hold your breath and don't even dare to move the canvas aside for fear of noise as you start to sneak through. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> oh no! Oh fuck, that's a big scuttle squeak beast! Yeah, there's the other one. Oh god, it's fine, it's fine. Obviously they're talking about some rat elsewhere and not mistaking you for one. That would be really stupid, they are talking about you. You would double your efforts to scramble through scrabbling in the dirt. Nah, nah, Bozo, that ain't a squeak beast. All of a sudden, even if it's pretty expected by now, a hand grips your ankle and he yanks you back out of the gap, then, off, uh, then up off the ground. The motion blur, adrenaline, and blood finally rushing to your head leaves you feeling vaguely nauseous and too disoriented to zap away. Especially with the guard so carelessly swinging you around by one leg. See, it's some weird thing. You're just a person. You wear clothes. You have shattered hopes and, and confirmed fears. It doesn't get more person than that. Did you understand any of that? No, no, Bozo. It's not talking. It's just doing that thing where it sticks together random words it's heard. It's nonsense. Just trying to sneak scraps in the trash, probably. What? No, no. You're just an alien. You can prove your wholesome intentions that they just let you down. But they stop you from registering you speaking. Scrawny little thing, barely enough meat on it. <clears throat> no one is scavenging around here. Ugly little fuck, though. You think it's irradiated? If they please listen, you're trying to explain. I hope so. That'll add flavor to the stock if it doesn't add, uh, add much protein. Why are they talking like that? You tell them they can't be serious. You knew clowns would be a fe could be a fever dream, but this is truly an insane clown. Oh, that's fucking. Fuck you! <laughs> the guard shakes you like, <laughs> like trying to stun a caught fish. <coughs> Sure, it's really chatty, ain't you? Can't just <clears throat> can't just let go uh, let go vermin like that and it'd be a waste of tossing the trash. Bozo, go take this cookie so you can toss it in the grub for tonight. You're you're exchanged to Bozo, who tosses you over one shoulder like a sack of feathers and starts whistling honking whistle honking through the carnival's paths for the smell of dubious stew. <laughs> Clown soup. Cloop. <laughs> wow, that was awful. <laughs> 
But hey. What happens if we go right now? What happens if we go right now? But hey, we got a bad ending. Hey, we got a bad ending. How about that? How about that? Let's us go right at 129.15. I need to write these down so I can add them to the to the fucking the YouTube video later. Pan, you don't want to know what you came back to. <laughs> it's anyone's guess on the final we started path on the edge path. After a minute, you see a promisingly large funhouse style building labeled the Miracle House on the outside. That sounds appropriately religious for this whole religion thing, right? Right? Right. Even if it isn't, you can always look elsewhere. You walk up to the unguarded entrance and step through thick, musty curtains. Only step immediately onto a slide that shoots you off of your feet, onto your ass, and plummeting down a short slope into... Balls? Oh god. Oh no, you know what this is. You scramble in the dark, slippery, alluring mass of colorful plastic spheres that beckon you into their depths. You can't touch the bottom with your feet, it's like circus quicksand. The more you struggle to find an exit, the further you sink. Before you can change tactics or get your bearings, the orbs have swallowed you up, up away from the light. You're truly lost in the ball sauce. Oh no! Trapped in the ball pit! <laughs> <laughs> oh jeepers wow how many endings is this part gonna have fuck ball pit someone pissed in the ball pit all right okay all right all right we go left then we have to persuade your way in with your impeccable charisma skills at 1 30 45 fuck me <coughs> you have a gut feeling that sneaking around is only going to lead to looking super suspicious, and after that, to be- to looking super murdered. I'm still gonna have to interact with these assholes, huh? Cool, Brad, love it. You stride up to the- to the guards head on, chin high, arms akimbo. Tidy whities as of yet unsoiled, even though your heart is jackrabbiting in your chest. The guards stare you down at- you, stare- stare down at you with the same blank curiosity that the spokesman in, in town had. They look like they're about to speak, or worse. You take a deep breath, squaring your shoulders. You tell them you're here to see the Grand Hive Lord. It's important. Ooh. What are you uh, to make that kind of request? And what are you to make? No one sees him before a sermon. Weird, heretical motherfucker like you is lucky to see him during a sermon at all. Your mouth goes dry, but you press on. You don't just have to see the Grand Hive Lord. You know him personally. He knows you. You're. Your longtime friends. He called your legs shapely once. You do a little con <laughs> contrapposto pose to make your point. The guards look at you in silence. Eyebrows raised. Your gut churns as you realize how flimsy this impromptu argument is. How it's never going to work. Oh, why don't you say so? If your friends and that's all right, he's in there getting ready for the night. You better catch him while he's still got free time. What? <laughs> Seriously, that's it? Oh yeah, it's a pretty simple setup for the crowds. Just go straight down. Stage is in the center. He'll be there. Can't miss it. That easy. Yeah, yeah, go on in. Huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey, look at that. Passive versus active. <coughs> the guards stand aside for you, waving you on through the tarp and into the tent. It might be dramatic, but you swear you feel a change in the air pressure, or the way oxygen moves around you. It's like walking into a cemetery, or a snowy day. Even though you can still hear the muffled work and chatter of busy clowns outside, all the noise yields to a quiet far louder. The green and pink of the moon, uh, through royal purple canvas, gives a subsurface scattering ambient light. It reminds you of pre-dawn on Earth, and makes a multitude of empty folding chairs surrounding the stage all the more eerie. It's a figure, it's back turned- or there's a figure, it's back turned to you, a wild thicket of hair warring for space alongside spiraling horns. As your legs carry you to this hardened carnival, you remember the one crucial fact you neglected to, neglected to consider. This Grand Highblood doesn't know you like the future. He is, in fact, not yet your friend. You are waltzing right up to him. Guy's <clears throat> so intimidating, fuck. Before you can reassess your desire to live, the tall, oh god, he's tall, figure turns towards your flat footed, slappy steps, crimson eyes, and the same uncomprehending stare all the clowns here have given you. Like it doesn't yet occur to them that you might be a thinking being instead of some small novelty. Damn, does some motherfucking claw beast get hold of your hide and spit you out in some new and unbelievably fucked up shape? Okay. You're used to that kind of blunt response. You tell him, no, you're just kind of like this. Just an alien. The Grand Highblood's eyebrows shoot up with, with immediate curiosity. The energy in his face pings, you, pings at you funny, and it takes you a beat to realize how much younger he is. Limbs uh, rangy, rangy, and not yet filled in to by middle age. Alien. No shit. 
Look at that smile. Look at that smile. All at once, he drops to, into a crouch at, uh, at your eye level. I feel like you probably need to, like, get on all fours to be on eye, eye level, but sure. <coughs> Hands uh, staking out with ease to grab you around the middle. You squeak like a dog toy. He grins. Oh, no. I knew the fishy bitch was sticking her sniff into the stars, but I had to figure she'd already stumbled on extraterrestrial heretical vessels. You some kind of, what, motherfucking escaped critter? Is that why Bozo and Bezo let you in? Because it is motherfucking hilarious, I'll admit. No, no, you're here on your own, Mr. The Grand High Blood. <laughs> Motherfucker, just call me GHB, that's a mouthful. Er, GHB? You don't have anything to do with the fucked up practices of galactic colonialism. You come in peace. These are so fucking loud. <laughs> it's so loud. That, mu that must tickle him even more, because his grin goes even wider in delight of surprise. Peace, huh? How's that working out for you down here? Pretty darn success- That's a great face, I love that. Pretty darn successfully, actually. You've been at this game for a good while now, and your track record speaks for itself. That is to say, your goodwill is infectious. God, he's so fucking tall. He lets go of you, letting you catch your breath, and drags up one of the white folding chairs. He sits backwards in it, arms crossed and chin resting on top. Oh, I see. I've been hearing all about peace and goodwill buzzing around. You saying that's your own handiwork raising hell, motherfucker? No, no, uh, you actually just witnessed the silence of Summoner as an observer recently. You believe in the cause, but the desire for worldwide compassion, everyone treating each other with the same dignity and care as family, is all grassroots alternia. What the fuck is a silence? That's some kind of cult. Sure, yeah. Irony aside, <laughs> you realize something. If this time is before the silence's movement, then what does he mean by peace buzzing around? Time before. Little critter, I think you ought to slow down and explain yourself a little more before your chatter hole flaps any faster. Uh-oh. Why does this always happen to you? You try your hardest to keep on keep on the download about your abilities, but it always slips out and gets immediately pounced on. Tell you what. You answer me, I'll answer you. Q for Q. That doesn't seem fair, but you suppose this conversation beat his old hat. Your alien powers include space and time travel. You might, uh, you might have been in the future. It doesn't matter, really. You can't change anything, honest. He doesn't have to worry about it. Something glints in his eyes as you talk. Um, is everything good? You good here? Everything, you, you chill, my guy? Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't pay him mine. You're smelling some poor little spit fuck all on your own, you know? I guess I'm miraculous shit. <coughs> I guess all miraculous shit is really possible. No wonder you still got your hide intact. It's been pretty close sometimes, but that's what you were saying. Lots of people have helped you out. Surely he's seen that generosity himself. His face sours along with a hissed inhale. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that shit time and time again. You want to know about movements? <coughs> Motherfucking pain they are. Thorn, a motherfucking reoccurring wrench in my machinations. Because they don't have the lifespan to see a bigger picture. But what about the flyer? The guy in town, all that talk of acceptance and belonging. How can he advertise that and sleep at, sleep at light? No, that tracks. <laughs> With so little actual respect for other people's desires, when he of all people is in a position to help. <laughs> Haven't you heard already? I'm setting up to be the GHB. You know what that means? You have any motherfucking clue what it's like out there? Beyond your little chit chats. Well, of course you do. You know people's lives, what they've suffered. Alteria ain't just people's lives, and it ain't one motherfucking place. I don't know what times you've been up to, but right now this planet is divvied up into so many pieces by so many clowns and fish drooling for the spot of power. You can't throw a stone right in five different territories. Sure, the big bitch owns us all, but you think she gives a fishy shit about what goes on down here? She's out playing planetary billiards, and don't get me started on the bloated air noggin of the honorable tyranny. So the rebel fights, the victors kill, and no one cares about getting real shit done, except all those little friends of yours living their small lives, and they get killed by the neighboring warlord just to piss another warlord off. It's chaos out there, and I want to be the ringleader that finally cracks this motherfucking planet into shape. This isn't religion at all to him. This is just politics, power, feudal states greedy for most for the most control. GHP gives a little smile like he's letting you in on something. It's not not about religion, but motherfucker to little motherfucker. <laughs> but motherfucker to little motherfucker. Zealots make a damn good force to be reckoned with. No matter how it's called. That's horrible. That's awful. Holy shit. 
If he really wants to stop chaos, doesn't that mean he cares about Shulkan on some level? At least a little? Sure I do. But I want to change things, period. It's about leaving a mark. My stamp on this scorched planet that everyone will know for ages. That this was the GHB and he made the rules of the motherfucking game. So it's all selfish, just chasing infamy and tall tales. Leaving Ripples in this dark universe is the only thing every troll has before they're snuffed out in the dark car. It's light, and then darkness, being bright for a short time, bright enough for the messiahs to witness it, is a worthy life goal. That much I've got faith in. And if it means that I'm in a better motherfucking position to do so than those who get snuffed out in a quicker instant than I, then I've got no problem making my vision outlast those who've gone <clears throat> who've got enough on their plates. Just scrambling to survive to tomorrow. <coughs> you don't know what to say for a moment. You've seen people mad with power, you've met willful ignorance, cowardice, and complacency. But knowing how GHB succeeds, knowing what he's ordered and put into place, every detail of what he's realized, has it been going well for him? Is he satisfied with what he's done to, done to people? Despite everything, his sheer expression falters, his smile flatlining, and the faintest breaking of eye contact. He finally looks sage again, with all the doubt and bluffing of young adulthood. It'll come around. Something's missing this all. Ain't a big deal. Is it not a big deal? Is it not a big deal, big guy? Come on, big cat, you can talk to me. Did you notice the little red and green in his hair? <clears throat> That's a really nice little touch. I appreciate that. <clears throat> it's just that it started with, <clears throat> started up with such a real bite to it. The entire city's catching like tinder to a wildfire. Nothing to stop, man. I just can't stand the motherfucking plateau. The other loading hoblets are going wise to what I'm up to in this raid. That's something new. I gotta rearrange my thinking on all this. New plan, new strategy, this new something. One thing I can't motherfucking accept, it's facing the end and knowing it was all in vain for nothing. Isn't it already? Isn't his dream of terror built on more terror? He straightens up, and you've lost his moment of doubtful introspection. His smirk is back along with a confident mirth. This would be a lot easier if he had a lower self-esteem. Fuck, MSPAR, fuck! Man, it'd be better if he just, you know, hated himself. <laughs> fuck! Alright, I'll bite. You act like a little motherfucking know-it-all. Like this is all familiar as the back of your frown. How about you give me the advice? Then? What are you gonna tell me to frame my mind towards going forward? Uh, really? He's asking this. You know he's patronizing you for his own entertainment, but you can't help feeling the urgency of the situation. If you say the right thing, the one right thing, maybe, just maybe, you can help help keep the bad from being the worst. How do you convince tyranny in its infancy to be anything but? What do you tell him? Eventually, time ends everything, man. So like, be nice. Friendship is the real miracle we make along the way. I need to drink something because this motherfucker is tearing my throat apart. Okay. All right. Let's wrap. Eventually time ends everything, man. So like, be nice. Friendship is the real miracle we make along the way. <coughs> That sounds like a way to get fucking cold. I tell him that. Wait, no, you're talking. You're, you talk about miracles in that one, and they're all about miracles. These, these, these clown fuckers. So like, be nice. That seems that's too vague, right? At least we talk about miracles in the other one. So we're gonna go. With, eventually, time ends everything, man. So like, be nice. One. Eventually, time ends everything, and so, like, be nice? You know what? Fine. It's so hypocritical saying that he has a vision for how he wants to change the future, and then in the same breath, saying that everything else is too insignificant to want the same. Surely, he sees how much that doesn't make any sense except as a narrow excuse for his own self-serving comfort. I feel like any officer is yeah, right? <coughs> he sets his jaw with an audible click. GHB looks as mean as you've ever seen him. His eyes are half-lidded, but the way his pupils are slitted into nothing makes it seem like all he's seeing is red. You take a step back. He stands up. You know, I'm impatient. Humoring you and shit! You've got a big mouth for a googly little noodle! Googly little noodle! I will have you know that there are children watching, sir! 
you back up another step. Maybe you're being a little overfamiliar. You're bracing yourself for the possibility of popping out of this particular narrative. But hey, you've still got skin in the game. Hopefully skin that will stay attached to you. <laughs> ah, I'll take your skin! Ah, he got my skin. I've been listening to an odd of necro Necrogoblicon lately, and there's one that's, um, I think it's just called the Pirates of Goblin Island, or it might just be Goblin Island or something like that, or Goblin Pirates or something like that. And the whole premise, or at least there's a, there's a little skit at the beginning where uh, some goblins steal a pirate captain's skin, and the, the, the story follows, <laughs> eventually the pirate goes back to get his skin back, and it's like, what? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, right? Aren't they nice? I like that they're red and green also. They're great. Do you listen to Necrogoblicon Tabletop? <clears throat> anyway. <clears throat> you know he may not like what you said, but shutting you up won't make it any less true. If he can't find it in himself to think about things compassionately, then at the very least he needs to start thinking rationally and stop kidding himself that he's that he's all the different from all that different from anyone else. Stop kidding myself, huh? Oh, he looks angrier. Oops. Yeah, motherfucking oops! Hey, come here for a second! You didn't mean it in that insulting way, it's just- Oh god, he can swipe his bear trap of a hand at you very, very fast. You dry, dive out of the way, but his claws still graze your arm. Oh, that's a lot of blood! The wounds are already shocked numb against your- uh, uh, are, uh, The wounds are already shocked numb against the pain. All you feel is a lot of slick heat from your shoulder down to your hand as you scramble back. GHB stares at his hand instead of coming after you <clears throat> any further. He's rubbing his fingertips together where red covers them. You hold your breath, but, he, but keep putting distance between the two of you while you can, stumbling over the first line of seats in the tent and up, uh, and up the stands. I'm talking about the hair ribbons. Gotcha, tabletop. Damn. We the mysteries start coming and they don't stop coming, do they? Back to the road till they hit the ground running. Didn't make sense not to live for fun. Your brain gets smart, but your head gets dumb! So much to do, so much to see! So much wrong with taking the back streets! <laughs> <laughs> That's it? You were kind of expecting a more violent reaction to the blood thing. Motherfucker, well, if you want to get all cuddly and shove legalities up my ass, call code says a little alien like you should have had your soul snatched from your hush for your blasphemous color, even had the chance to hit the air for all to see! It's kind of redundant, is what I'm saying. Okay, you guessed, point taken, but what happened to the whole trying to debone you thing he was, go he was doing a second ago? <laughs> Thanks, Chixie. Can we get a death metal cover of, um... Uh, fuck. Hey now, you're a rock star. <laughs> Does that exist? No, that's all good. You just had me fucked up for a blink there. We're chill now. What? Yeah, it's fine. I'm not gonna call you. Come back down. Fuck! He'll have to excuse you. But you really have trouble believing that. The time turn of the mood has you really shaken up. Also, your arm is starting to throb a little. GHB sits, ba sits back down in the chair with elbows propped on his knees, as if that as if that in any way proves he's completely harmless as long as his ass is in a seat. Don't put mind of that. I just get real mad sometimes, is all. Especially little heretics who think it's a motherfucking smart idea to lecture me on my own motherfucking capabilities when I'm already the baddest gesture in conquest that's made this merry-go-round go round. You were about to come back down from the stands, but you were, uh, but you put that leg right back where it came from and stay where you are. If you're so irritated, you can drop it and be on your way, really. He must find that funny, because his, his expression is nothing short of jovial. Even the burn of his eyes has faded like a flash storm that's already disappeared. He gives you a dazzling little half-smile that has you seriously considering walking back up to him. Don't be like that. Usually I don't have to rein in my motherfucking birthright of carnival carnage, but I can put on my big clown pants and face a little criticism like a little motherfucker. I asked for it, didn't I? I want to be the Grand High Blood. I gotta be ready for this stuff all the time. Besides, getting that riled up over mere motherfucking words only shows where, I, where my weaknesses are. The shit that's getting under my skin I don't have, have it figured out properly. So give me the rest. I asked for the full motherfucking critique. So hit me. Well, go on, spill your peace. What you meant by not special is that if he has the perspective, quote unquote, to dismiss everyone with a shorter time to be brighter, whatever, then he has to know, has to know in his heart, that the same fate will eventually come for him too. Yeah, that's obvious. I know immortality ain't in my cards. I'm not motherfucking dense. Does he, though? Sure, he might know him. he himself will die, but does he realize it's not just about him dying, that it's about being forgotten? 
being erased. Does he realize that there's a scale of time where the importance is so desperately, or where the, he, where the importance he so desperately wants will fade too? Because your friends know that, or knew that, or will know that. Everyone fighting to make tomorrow better knows it's not about them. They won't live to see the outcome. Sometimes the outcome never comes. They know that they and what they fought, uh, fight for are both fragile and temporary. But they keep popping up, time and time again, don't they? Even without knowing anything about the past uh, that passed on the torch to them. So the last, I don't know what that said, I can't read, hang on. About the last that passed the torch on to them. Making a mark on the universe is impossible, so why not try to make the best of the effect he can have on people now? It may not be much, it might get dismissed, it might get replaced with something awful. But that will get replaced too. All the best people you've known just do what they can, trusting that other people will do the same. It's not grand, but it means so much. They mean so much. It breaks your heart. GHB has his chin in both hands by the time you're done. His mercurial moods are still in full swing, but he looks more sullen than insulted this time. You climb down from your proverbial soapbox at the tent seats. You have to admit the acoustics in here are pretty great for public speaking. <clears throat> Is he okay? Like, petulant child sulking because someone told him no aside? Yeah. <laughs> damn. <clears throat> Is that a good damn? Does he understand where you're coming from? This motherfucking sucks! You tell me everything I've done so far is... No, fuck that. I'm not gonna sit being motherfucking complacent just because no one else on the planet's got the drive and vision to shake eons! You weren't telling him to be complacent, like, at all. In fact, you were telling him to be the opposite of complacent, to help make things... Damn right I'm not gonna be complacent! All this proves is... <clears throat> all this just proves my point. This universe has been motherfucking barren, and I've gotta dig deeper, harder, push this carousel to its limits until everything under its canopy! If I'm doing like everyone else disappear, I'll howl my motherfucking guts out so loud that it's hurt even when it goes holy spectral and gone! You have a little you have a little trouble following his cryptic language. Is this how cult leaders get followers by being bizarrely verbose? But if you're interpreting this right, you're really sad to hear that. You thought maybe this would sway his heart even a little, even in the most util utilitarian, unemotional way. You really would have liked him for him to become even a hair's breadth a better person. He has the potential to be a brilliant leader. He's a great speaker, charismatic, obviously self-aware, and motivated enough to work on self-improvement. And yet you don't know. You're at a loss. You just wish you knew what would change his mind to be kinder. <coughs> He's gonna vastly honk, right? Hey, non-binary, how are you now? Oh, shucks. Thanks for the compliment anyway. Even if true kindness is worth dirt here. It doesn't have to be. Keep on preaching. You've been knack for it. I'm I would know. I gotta thank you for the rest of it, too. He left excuse you for not being particularly thrilled about helping him. Is your pants up in sponge sugar clouds? I've had the miraculous chance to converse with the adversary. It's a challenge to my way of thinking. I've got to get stronger conviction. <clears throat> Overcome or perish. You've blessed me with that chance to evolve. Also, you're a funny, unexpected motherfucker. I've never talked to someone like you before. It's fresh. I like it. I guess I've been an understimulated little Pagli <laughs> Pagliacci that needed a shakeup. That's... Great. You're a little tired and befuddled from the shock in your arm is wearing off, which is souring to your mood even further. You should honestly get going. This was a disappointment even for your spunky personality. Hey, whoa, whoa, hold up a sec! He stands up and kneels in front of you, delicately moving your arm and inspecting the blood covering it. No, you can't go out looking like that. The rambunctious gestures out there ain't nearly as patient as I am. You're a little too bummed out to process it as he he's pulling out an endless rope of colorful scarves from his vest like a magician. Okay, he's really doing that. He's wearing the cheesiest grill like this is fucking hilarious. <laughs> Here. You stand there as he rips one of the hankies off to clean up the blood, then another to tie around the wound. That should do to you sneak out of here. You blink. He does remember you can zap teleport out of here, right? Oh shit, man. About that. Oops. Oh well. Huh. Tell you what, I've got an idea sprouting in my pan. He takes your shoulders, looking you in the eye. Are you gonna throw me? Are you gonna fucking? Are you gonna fastball special me? You gave me a mini-sized revelation today. Consider this the mini-sized favor I owe to you. Next time we meet, you've got my motherfucking blessing to be spared from reckoning. The intensity in his eyes, he's dead serious. This is his idea of integrity. You're suddenly struck with the memory of your past future with GHB. His tolerance, 
No, his admiration of you. What you thought was out of nowhere, serendipitous even, impossible on its own. The implications of this ripple of time don't make you uneasy, but it's awfully close. You swallow and nod. What else can you say? Your time loop survival depends on it. Nice. Now go in peace, you funny little motherfucker. Since you're all about <clears throat> that fuzzy feel-good shit. You can't see your own future, but you sure hope you can find that peace within yourself after this. Favor of the Fickle! Oh, that's the good ending. Oh, fuck, that's the good ending. <laughs> I mean, I guess that makes sense. There's really not much good we could have gotten out of this out of this asshole. Well, let's get the- let's get- Let's get the bad ending! What the fuck is gonna happen? Are we gonna get eaten? What was that? 154 at 15. We haven't been eaten yet. We're probably gonna get eaten. Alright, let's get the bad ending. What the fuck? <coughs> We're almost done. Alright, go left, then we zip on by, we charisma skill our way through, then we go on through, and then we tell him friendship is the real miracle we make along the way. At 154, where are they? let's go with 50. Friendship is the real miracle we make along the way. You tell him what you've been trying to say this whole time, hoping this time it will get through to his head. Survival and success- oh, the music stopped. <laughs> Survival and success have to be defined by the relationships everyone has. That's what matters. Friendship isn't just a solita solitary chase for fun times. It's about connecting and compassion. <clears throat> Caring for and protecting people as if they're family. <clears throat> as, if th as if they were family. Can't you see how important that is? You live for the moments of people realizing they're all in this together. For the uplift in your heart when you witness casual tenderness. Hell, even basic decent respect. More often than any tr many trolls would believe is possible on Alternia. Small moments. Not enough of them. But they're all the same. Undefeatable. As you talk, a light sparks in GSP's eyes, and that light seems to warm into the rest of his face as a broad smile. He slides out of the chair and back to popping a squat next to you, this time with a long arm thrown around your shoulder in a reassuring half-hug. Such a flighty motherfucking thing, friendship is. All, up, <clears throat> all about existing as that very outmost layer of ourselves. Oh, talk, talk, talk! Tiny little skins made up of, of talk bumping up against each other, and no meat inside them! Just bubbles liable to pop if they spread any thinner. There's the nagging vertigo that comes with being forced to self-reflect like this. When was the last time you actually thought about yourself as a person? About what was, in, or about what was inside you and not just a ver vector inserted into other people's stories? But that can't be everything. Your mind's used to the summoner, silent, psionic, disciple. All of them, such different people, <clears throat> between their faces around others. And the ones that they have in the mirror. They warred with themselves so much that, uh, to, make what they were, to make what they were to others mean something. They matter. So much. And not just them, everyone. You think to yourself of everyone you've met here. All of them adults. Honest to God adults who have to grapple with how they're defined by the people around them. On top of everything to just, of uh, trying to su just survive until tomorrow. This restlessness isn't just you. It's everyone in the universe. And ain't that ache just a motherfucking sin? A motherfucking crime. The original plague against all mirthful. Don't you think it's grand if there was a way to unite, <clears throat> untie, excuse me, I can't read, that motherfucking sorrow woven all up in the universe. I don't like the music. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <coughs> you don't think you said any of that last bit out loud. Your head hurts. Your head pounds. Or your heart hurts. Your head pounds. You know what mirthful means? Ain't just comedy. Ain't just the roar and applause. Ain't just funny motherfuckers throwing down the white hot bars at each other for gore and glory. This shit's pure joy. A straight up line between us and a miraculous column that ain't just lying on the street for any old body to pick up. That sounds nice! Really, you want people to be happy. You want everyone to be happy, actually. Which is why the whole exclusive members club doesn't really do it for you. Bullshit. Everyone's got their motherfucking place in this grand scheme. Just that most outside motherfuckers are too cluck shit scared to even take a sideways glance at the measure of death, let alone treat it as their brother on their shoulder like <clears throat> that it really is. You're beyond fed up with the do oh, it's getting darker, isn't it? Is it getting darker? Am I losing my mind? You're beyond fed up with the dogmatic everyone in their place shit, but the sun swing of the conversation still has you caught off guard. Still, it's genuinely horrific to think people should be grateful for a place dying in this in his grand design. I've got a motherfucking vision of your place in this mirthful, mirthful machinery of mine too. Great. Now he's just ignoring what you're saying. Wait, what? A place? No, you're not interested in that. Thanks anyway. <clears throat> the music. Oh, it's good. 
Oh, it's amazing. Where's your gifts landing? <clears throat> Where's your gifts landing your push Except aching, great, big, rootless, drifting. Ain't it a motherfucking shame? All time snip from time and space, no way that keeps you from any real sense of being alive! Are you sure you're not the vast hunk in hell? With all that, you've been a tiny skipping stone that doesn't even make a motherfucking ripple in this universe. So you just keep trying your damnedest to hound people down and just seeing you as a friend. Because that matters. Because <clears throat> that means you still motherfucking exist in a way that matters. You don't feel well. You don't feel motherfucking right. You don't know how you feel, but you're starting to think with a slow crumble of a decayed foundation that maybe you've ever felt... No. Never been right. Ever. This whole time... Is, is it? Is it? Is the text changing color? What is happening? Am I losing my mind? This whole time, this whole story, this whole you that's suspended by threads of relationships seems suddenly frighteningly gossamer thin. For what? Can you honestly look at yourself and the effort you've put into friendship and see a righteous destination ahead of you? In all your bottomless mother, uh, motherfucking hunger for, uh, for new faces, has there been a single person you've been able to return to with the same fire and purpose the first time you met them? A sense of rightness? A sense of hive? You've been put through the ringer on this lost, lost motherfucking waste of a planet so often that you almost mistake hot, bewildered tears spilling over for blood running down your face. What's happening to you? What's happening in you? Is what's happening really you? GP reaches, holding his hand out <clears throat> to you, full of every motherfucking promise you've never even imagined yourself to have. You stare at it. You take it. Of course you take it! You only fully realize when you notice how the skin of his hand is smooth and cool, like some leviathan splitting blasphemous depths like a knife. And ain't that just exactly it? Ain't that the drive you've been missing? With your magical motherfucking gifts of dancing with timelines, I've got the whole of this universe up for grabs now. I'm taking it all by storm, little motherfucker. I'll be the biggest chuckle fuck around spanning this side of the era. I'll, oh boy, wait, is it actually GHB speaking now? I'm taking it all by storm, little motherfucker. I'll be the biggest chuckle fuck around spanning this side of the era. I'll spear the future straight up in half, and every tittering gesture under my shadow gets a slice of that high pie. Gets to be a piece in this miraculous jigsaw puzzle. Wait a second, that's not what you said. <laughs> I like all the swirls for the Capricorn symbol. That's really neat. And how long are you going to be able to hide behind that motherfucking flimsy excuse of a narrative pronoun? Damn, you really were just waiting for some steel pan motherfucker to waltz in and turn his weak sauce, this weak sauce shit to a proper first person gospel. No, you weren't. Try again. You. Again. I'm not comfortable with this. That's the shit. But fair enough. No motherfucker like you can't stand being alone with yourself. That's fine. That's what we is for around here. We? We. We! Anyway. <coughs> Ain't we tired of being nice? Don't we just, just want to go motherfucking ape shit? Oh, fucking hell, this is cringy, edgy, troll Scientology, motherfucker. This cannot be working. It can't be. This is too stupid to work. You're... We're better than this. We've been the voice of reason the whole time. We should know better. <clears throat> we'll never know the motherfucking discontent of not having purpose or place again. One thing was right though. I've got added. Some, I've got to add some real consideration for new friends. Want to be friends? Want to be friends? Oh God, it might be working. It might have been motherfucking settled from the second we started. That's unsettling as shit! <laughs> Woo! 202 fucking 40? Wow, that was unsettling as shit! Holy crap! Well, that's the ending of a uh, volume 10! Shit! <coughs> Alright, well, let's do the YouTube outro. We got some community stuff to do. Thank you for, so much for watching YouTube. If you liked it, make sure you click the like button down below and subscribe to keep up with my stuff. New video every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. It is my stream VODs. There might be multiples depending on if I stream multiple things on Saturday, but uh, there's the link down in the description to my Twitch channel. Please consider giving me a follow or subscribing if you can so you can see what I'm playing and, you know, when I go live. It's usually Saturdays, but that can change. Um, comment. What was your favorite part about this? Did you like uh, uh, Red Glares or Die Bloods more? And share with your friends.
the people who do Disney Quest uh, do such an amazing job with these. They're like, it's so, it's so good. And I love all the different varying art styles. Um, it's like, it's astounding the work that these people put into it because it's so damn good every single fucking time they come up with a new volume. Um, you go to itch.io, there's a link down in the description also where you can, you can play this, play these volumes for yourself. And I encourage you to do so. Please support uh, the people that make this game because it's fan made and it is so amazingly well done. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Please, YouTube, uh, stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you next time. Bye, YouTube.